Rose Curve, you are going man from the city first and white and shop to my side for Umbrella Evening Brunch. You are going man, 24 for the month car, me and people. Miami for the item. Memorial Week in the Dunmore Shock of Bossa, only for what's in it. So you are going man, follow out, for the vibe. Umbrella Evening Brunch. Memorial Weekend, Miami. Outside, Shock of Bossa, live. Hi, my name is Taiko Nutris, former national 100 meter champion of Jamaica, and you're tuned into Elite Sports TV. Like, share, and subscribe to keep up to date with all of the new and upcoming inf information we have to do with, especially corruption in athletics. <laughs> and turn on the notification bell to get all of the, the upcoming information that you need. <laughs> My name is Earl Stevens, former international player and reggae boy, and you're watching Elite Sports TV, Ryan, LFC. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date to get the latest content on the reggae boys football. Hi, my name is Tiffany Cameron, Reggae Girls Top Striker, and you are watching Ryan LFC YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hi, I'm Marla Setman, Reggae Girls Top Midfielder. Oh, let me start over again. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Marla Setman, Reggae Girls Top Midfielder, and you're here on Ryan FC and Elite Sports. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to keep up all to date with Reggae Girls and Reggae Boys Top News. Okay. Hi, this is Yasmin Jameson, Reggae Girls Goalkeeper, and you're watching Ryan LFC's YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Jermaine Clark Jr. here from Bayern Royal Squad 2023. You're watching Elite Sport TV with Ryan LFC. Stay tuned for all things Reggae Girls, Reggae Boys, and Sports. Peace out. I am Liam Bailey, and you are watching Elite Sports TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright. Hey guys, Bonnie Shaw here with Elite Sports TV. Make sure you like and subscribe and always tune in. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening to everyone down in the comment section. Really do appreciate all of you guys tuning in to another episode on Elite Sports TV. It's been a long time, God know how long, we do an interview. So we have a former FIFA referee we're going to interview. We have a lot to discuss with the former FIFA referee. We have a lot of questions. I hope you guys get a question and let us ask the former referee some of these decisions going against Jamaica recently in CONCACAF. Yeah? So make sure you say, when you grab your favorite peanut colada, we're going to hear for probably one hour, 30 minutes, depending on how long his story is. So make sure that once you join the stream, you hit the like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But without further ado, people, we're going to introduce our guest, a man that has so many Taika team names, viewers and subscribers. We, call, we could call him the ref corner. We could call him coach. We could call him um, educator. Um, this man has, I don't know how him do it, but we have to give him credit, people, all right? Um, so, good evening, um, the man himself. Good evening. How are you doing, man? Yeah, good evening, Ryan. Good evening to your subscribers, the listeners, the viewers. I'm doing good. Well, How is the family doing? Yeah, doing, doing well, man. Doing well. Good, 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 good. So, how is the Easter going? Everything is good? Yeah, it's a time you take to, to relax and, and chill with the family, you know. As you all know, I'm a teacher, educator, so I get like two and a half weeks break. So it's a long break and I have to enjoy it. Okay, fair enough. But first and foremost, um, where do you grow up in Jamaica? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where you grew up in Jamaica? Actually, grew up in Westmoreland, a small district called Smithfield, just outside of Savannah Mark. Yeah, I went to Savannah Lamar Infant, then Savannah Lamar Primary, and I actually played Dakar Stock for Manning's, Manning's High School. I, I kept it Manning's High School, yes, the Manning High School, second oldest school in Jamaica. 
<laughs> well, so which school is the first? Hey, Woolmouth Boys. Yeah. Woolmouth Boys. Yeah, I think Woolmouth Boys is 1736. Man, is 1738. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Thank you very much for that, man. I learned something today. So I appreciate that, man. So what is it like, though, going to school? What is it like growing up in Westmoreland, financial-wise, though, going to school and all of them stuff there? Well, grew up in the country, as you know, a lot of families, they didn't have it. You know, I, I grew up with my four siblings. It's actually six, five of us by mom and dad's side. So we, we actually grew up poor. I never knew I was poor, to be honest, until I, I read six form at Malice. You know, because you're going to school, sometimes you don't have no lunch money. You know, um, it's, it's mango season, apple season, pear, you name it, you know. So growing up, we, we grew up humble, you know, from a, a, a very educated family, um, Christian background and stuff. But actually, I never knew I was poor until, as I said, when I, when I entered sixth form at Manis. As, as growing up, you, you, you had little, you know, and, and you never worry about your, 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 your friends and your neighbors who were um, well off than you, you know, you, you, you grew up to enjoy the little that you have and be, be satisfied with what you have. Okay. Okay. So differently, apart from that, you know, when you read six form, you know, that the parents peer. Um, so, so, oh. Or, or it go when you're going to school, though. Or, or it go when you're going to school. Now, is you get lunch money every day? Is you get food? You know, a lot of people have the prospect and say you come from country, you can't hungry. Come on, it's nothing good. <laughs> no, when a lot of people mm -hmm. in Jamaica believe that when you grow up in country, you can never hungry because you have a lot of food oh, okay. and stuff. There. Yeah, that, that, that was never the case for me. Um, my father is and was um, a, a tailor by, by profession. My mom is a dressmaker. But sometimes, you know, when it's back to school and stuff, the work would come in. When it's off season, they had to seek employment elsewhere. But, but growing up, um, Ryan, sometimes one time for the week, you get lots of money. Or <laughs> two times for the week, you get lots of money. You understand? Yeah. And I, I had to do what I had to do. I, I was, I had a lot of friends, put it that way. I had a lot of friends. I was good at math growing up. So a lot of my friends, whenever they, they needed me to help them with their homework, their math homework, they would pay me, you know? Sometimes mm -hmm. they would see me by myself. They would help, you know, buy, buy lunch for me, cocoa bread, you know, cheese in it, stuff like that. But, but I never had lunch money every day. And I, I, I didn't live far from school. So sometimes, like in primary school, I used to walk home. My father would give me, you know, lunch. I eat, and then I rush back to school. Okay, fair enough. So, so you, you live close to to Manning's High School, Savannah Lamar. Yeah, I, I live close to Savannah Lamar because Sav, Sav Infant and Sav Primary they share the same compound. So it is about uh, maybe two and a half miles from where I live. Yeah. That's half infant and man is in another half a mile. Oh, so okay. maybe man is just three miles from where I live, and then sub infant like two and a half mm. miles. So you play a Dakasta Cup only for yes, money. Man is, yeah. Uh, so I was the goalkeeper. Goals, you don't play Pepsi? Yeah, man. I played um back in those back, back back in the country, they don't call it Pepsi and Coles, it's just urban. So they call urban. it under 14, under 16. So I played all three. Okay, fair enough. So you was a goalkeeper. Yeah, I never started out as a goalkeeper. I started out as a midfielder and a striker, but I had a breathing problem. Mm -hmm. So in, in under 14, under 16 is when the coach switched me because I couldn't play the entire match. I used mm -hmm. to have a breathing. They call it short, shortness of breath. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's not asthma, but, you know, I have breathing problems. And after that, I realized and I, 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 I kind of developed this strategy, how to deal with it. And the coach put me in goal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what is your family background like playing this sport? Is your father you usually play or your mom you usually play? What what is it? Uh they love the sport, especially my dad. My dad loved football, loved cricket. That's about it. They used to carry me. My dad used to carry me on his on his shoulder 
to go. Uh, you know, Reno is the is a giant from Westmoreland. Westmoreland, yeah. Farmer, yeah, Reno. So he used to carry me on his on his shoulder, ride his bicycle, go to Chrome to to watch. Um, back in those days was Ray and nephew, and and Craveney, Craveney National Premier League. But they 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 didn't play sport other than in school. They didn't play party at school. Maybe oh. a PE and stuff like that. But my father loves sport. Okay, so oh, yeah, for you, my mother is a cricket fan. Cricket. My mother oh. is a cricket fan. Yeah. Okay, so how oh, do how oh, far do you go in in in, in football when you go into Marlins? I actually I actually played uh half a season for Reno. That time it was under twenty one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of person don't know this. I played um half a season. Yeah, that time under twenty one. They, they they you 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 should have a a youth team. In your Premier League setup at that time, and they were just starting you know, mm -hmm. up. I think 98, 99, somebody between 98 and 99. So I played like a half a season with them, some practice matches and stuff. Uh, I never registered as a goalkeeper because I was still at school. Mm -hmm. Right. And then from there, you no, know, I went to college. Okay. So when you leave Manning's high school now, you graduate from six form. So how much subject you leave Manning's with? I, I left with seven subjects. Yeah. Seven. seven seven subjects yeah including maths and english including maths and english yeah okay fair enough so what next for you you said you didn't continue I went to after college actually got uh while, while i was in sixth form deliberating and stuff I, I i i wanted to do two things one of two things i wanted to either do sports management at ue or i wanted to be um a, a phys ed teacher at GC. So mm. while I got accepted for both, I didn't have the money to go to you. And uh, I went to student loan. I went mm. to student loan, got a guarantor. And first school fee, first school fee back then, 2000, was $19,500. <laughs> and 19. one year of student loan. Wow. Yeah, one year of student loan. That's the year 2000. And I went to, to GC, did four years, got my bachelor's. And then right after I got the work at my present job now, Hillel Academy. Okay. So leaving Mannings went to um college, right? So what you study in college? It's actually physical education, um, sport and massage therapy. Okay. Right? But we do a, we do a lot of science subjects at GC Foster. So I can actually teach general science and biology. Okay, fair enough. So you didn't play any sports for GC Foster? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I was a goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. Goal yeah. Throughout my okay. career, from my, as I said, I have a breathing problem. Yeah. yeah. I can play on the field, but throughout my career is goalkeeper. <laughs> so I don't understand it. So you have that breathing problem. So oh, you become a referee. All right. So it's different now. So uh, let me go back from birth. So I was, I was 12 pounds when I was born. 12 pounds. Okay. So picture a big baby, 12 pounds. You know, growing mm. up, his, his mother's side is big, his father's side is big. After going to to, to high school, you know, you, I, I wasn't struggling with it, you know. Uh, PE, I was fine. It's just the, the training at the Costa Cup with matches. So if I'm to play on the field, you know, it's a different component. If you play on the field, it's different in the goal. In the goal, you're just saving shots, you're in your back, stuff like that. On the field, you have to be running up and down. You have to do in uh, miles, a lot of miles on your leg. Now, going to ha um, college now, I kind of study in depth of why this is. So one is is exercise. So because of my body weight and stuff, I have to be exercising um, cautiously. If you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So uh, if my regular teammates were doing, say, 10 and 12 laps, I couldn't do more than 8 laps. And apart from that, um, nutrition is very, very important. So when I went to college, I get to understand the body, why this is so, why, why I need to do, and what I, what I, what I should do. Uh, from being at college, it's only once I, ever, I was affected by this, one time. And my sister was a nurse at UA at the time. And when she took me to UA, UA get it checked out, blah, 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 they said I was overworked. Mm -hmm. But separate and apart from that, it doesn't affect my referring career. Never, ever, ever. 
Okay. So after leaving college now, what next for you? Are you going out into the world now? Leave Mannings, you go to college, you get yourself where you're supposed to get. You're going to work now. What for you? Yeah, so I actually got um, an interview while I was finishing up my, my degree at um, GC Factor College. I got an interview at, at Hillel Academy in the summer. So it was, this was the summer of 2004. That was the, the, the August. A vacancy opened up. They called me. Um, I was still in college, Ryan, right? so I had to borrow my friend's shoes, <laughs> my friend pants, and, and my friend's shirt, you know? Because mm -hmm. at college, you know, it's just college stuff, you know? Yeah. You, you just have jeans and polo shirt and stuff. You don't really have a suit, you know, have nothing like that. At college, you're there, you're finishing up. So I had to, got all of that, did the interview. They were so impressed. And like three weeks after I I I I started teaching at, at Hillel Academy. And whilst I I I was at Hillel, I was a referee also. But just coming into the thing, you know, I was fresh. I was introduced to refereeing by Stephen Brown, the late great Stephen Brown. He was a a, a GC faster student at the time. But he was, he was before me. He was like two years ahead of me. And he introduced me to referee. And I must lift my hat um, after him. So while I, I got the job at Hillel, I was still doing my referee. And, you know, that was, um, so I became a referee in 2002. But I graduated in 2004. And I'm still teaching now. This year is my 20th year teaching at Hillel. Wow. Wow. And you teach physical education? Physical education, yeah. That's the only you teach, only subject? Yeah, presently. I taught science and bio in the past, but that's my specialty right now. I'm asked for oh. a level two, three for advanced level two coach. Okay. Yeah, I did my certification with a lot of the Premier League um, coaches this year right now. I did my okay. certification with them. Um, firstly, from Waterhouse, Jerome Wait, you name it. About six, seven years ago, seven years. So you're going to in, you're going in coaching too. I I I am. Uh, what should I say? A part of my job at Hillel involves coaching. It's just that I don't go outside of the school. Okay. Yeah. So like oh. like the U19 team, I assist like the U16 team, goalkeeping coach stuff like that. Okay, fair enough. Well talented man. Yeah. Okay, so so tell us, you remember the game that the first game that the referee? As in my my first ever game or local game, international game, first, first ever game. game, man, first ever game. First ever game. I mean, yeah, my first ever game was over Fernandita Park. <laughs> it was a schoolboy game. So while I was still at GC, I I kind of excelled through the ranks. So. I used to um, take the taxi from GC Foster to to Portmore or wherever the match is, you know, they would take me. So I was doing assistant referee to Ilian Walker, bro. I don't know. You, you must know Ilian Walker, bro. Of course, I know Ilian Walker, bro. Yeah, man. She was a referee. Yeah, man. Very good referee. She was a good referee. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. She was a very good referee. So she, she was in the middle. I was on the line. And this other referee named Patrick Robinson, they call him Pinky. Mm -hmm. So so I was running, you know, the referee is supposed to stop at the halfway line, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I run the entire touch line from one flag straight on to the next flag, right short the game. Because, you know, just getting into the game and stuff, you don't really know. They just take you and put you in the game because you look bright, you like you can you can run a line. So mm -hmm. at the, at the halftime, no, she came over to me and said, Young boy, you know you're fitting up, but stop at the halfway line. Stop at the halfway line and make your cards. <laughs> <laughs> so I would forever ever remember that deal. That was my first deal. <laughs> oh God, I can't believe where I say. So that was yeah. a so well on it. That was a school that was a money cup game. That was money a money cup game. game. So you didn't get yeah, any training prior to that to know that you should no, not. No, no, no. And I see it just seeing them, seeing them on TV. You know, seeing them like a GC faster refing matches. I never know. I never knew he's supposed to stop at the halfway line. <laughs> but I but the cars were alright, you know. Outside was okay, chores were okay. And the mm. fouls, I, I allow her to call the fouls. 
You understand? Mm. And you're yeah. green and stuff. You just started into the thing. But I never knew I was supposed to tap on the halfway line. <laughs> Say, start out of that. Assistant referee. Okay. Yeah, everybody. Everybody. Everybody start out as a line. Everybody start with an assistant referee. Yeah, what people have like. Alright, so the thing is that you it's better for you to learn the game from the line than in the middle. Why? Because the person in the middle, they have sole responsibility. Mm -hmm. they, everything stops with them. So when you're on the line, you can make mistake, you know, you can make mistake in terms of going through a right or going through a left, or side stuff like that. The person in the middle now can always overrule the air. Especially mm -hmm. if you're young and the person in the middle is a senior. So mm -hmm. everybody starts on the line. Every single person. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. And so, specialize. so after that first game there, what was the feelings like for you? Yeah. I, I was young, you know, young and fit and everything. The feeling was good. It's just that, you know, after every game, they will tell you, you you're doing this right, you're doing this right, but just do this a different way. You know, second long, you're making your cars. Wait on the referee to signal and then you signal. But it, the, 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 the remarks were positive. You know, it was very, very positive. And that same year, I did under 21. You know, yeah. under 21 used to play before. So, for example, Boys Town. Yeah. Right. Under 21. So I'm under like 21. Back. Yeah, yeah. So, it used to play before. Hot, hot sun. So, yeah. I did a whole season of under 21. Okay. So, you grew, you grew into it. It's from there, you get strength to strength. Yep, yep. Going to the sport. Okay, so after that, now, what next for you in the referee business? So I, I actually was traversing from Kasafa. So when I when I left college, I knew I was going to stay in Kingston. You know, I knew I was going to stay in Kingston. So I got a place in Kingston. I was going to train. That time we trained at Stadium East. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every Saturday we now on the train. And then they would they would put you on a team. So they would put you like a, a, a senior referee, a not so senior junior, and you would be the other AR. So I wouldn't be on the side with the benches. I would be an assistant number two. And from there, so I did that entire season under 21. And then the other season, I did line and the fourth official. And then the third season now, I did straight middle, pure middle. Because by then, some older referees were leaving the system. So they want to you know, have a transition. Mm -hmm. And from then I made the Premier League panel. So the Premier League panel is the is the elite referees in the country. You know, you're rough, you're, you're, you're rubbing shoulders with all the FIFA persons, person running to World Cup and stuff like that. So you're gaining experience every single day. So how many times a week the referee chain? One time, one time a week. But but as, as a professional and a white badge person, you have to train at least three times a week. But we okay. the regular referees. Come back say we working. It's not like we're professional. So we only meet on a Saturday to train. So eh, one day. So you don't do no extra stuff and all of them stuff there. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. Like like me who I am a physical education teacher. I will do my last my training and stuff. But the average person, average person who is not on the Premier League panel, who is not a FIFA referee only saturday alone because they do much in the week okay. i must say when money cup money cup play almost every day you know, four days a week you have mm -hmm. super league on saturday you have seed bat lake you have major league so you do you can't really train and ref okay. because that's what i'm saying okay so right. oh but, but, but like the white badge and the panel referees they don't do matches more than two or three times per the week so they mm -hmm. have to train because they go overseas to officiate mm -hmm. so tell me something now so So, so you got you so so much would I be your training? Forget fitness and all of them stuff there. Yes, yes. Put it that way. You, you train, you train, and then you carry it out in your match. But 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 for example, like overseas match. Say I get a, a World Cup qualifier to to officiate. They would send you like three four months. I mean three four weeks in advance. You're gonna do Canada versus Honduras. No, from you get that appointment, you have to prepare. You can't go in that much to take it as a training. So mm -hmm. all the local matches will be on the side burner and you have to prepare. You and your team have to be prepared. You have to run some hills. You have to do this. You have to do that in preparing for the match once you get that appointment. But mm -hmm. locally, yes. If you, you like your Premier League and your Manning Cup, 
more than likely, yeah. While you're refing, you're doing a little thing. Call it that way. So tell me something. When a referee of a team, so you basically, you know, get somebody new to work with, like your linesman and you, the, the two person who work on the line. How that work? Is you guys continue to ref the same? Everywhere you are, everywhere you are ref, you got the same set of people go with you are different. Uh, they, they used to be like that. You used to have like a trio. Like say a Tyrell, a Keeble, um, another referee. Tyrell used to go every single match. But what they did years ago was to mix it up. So if you're going to Kanka Cup, you're not going to go with the same referee all the time. You may work with a Mexican referee now, a Salvador referee next week. Next month you work with a Guatemalan referee. So that is why they change it and 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 add the referees as a part of their team. So you don't travel with the same team all the time to do all the matches. No. But sometimes you may have a one assistant. For me, example, me as a CR, I may have a one assistant referee who they've sent me to most of the matches because we understand each other and we have a, a, a rapport. We know how to rep together. Oh. You get what I'm saying? Because I know, I realize that you watch even the Premier League when I was in Jamaica, like, I always see a referee and the same lines, man, most of the time. Right, right. So may I wonder right. if they are FIFA. good chemistry. Yeah, exactly. Especially if they are FIFA, they try to give them matches all the time. So when they go overseas, all the time. So for example, um, Nation. Nation and OJ. OJ from St. James. OJ Doheny. So they went to the under-20 World Cup together. They went to Gold Cup together. And they would do a lot of Premier League games together. So they have that connection. It used to be um, Parchment and Anderson. You understand? Yeah. Right. So they, they appear them like that sometimes, but not all the time. Okay. So you know more understand because how do you ref a game? Like when you play a certain team, oh because you know, like when you play a certain ball position team, like Man City and Liverpool, mm -hmm. like a referee in the middle, he don't know, he may not understand what the players they might do. So him run and all of them stuff there. Him kind of understand it both team or them play oh oh all that all that important as a referee all right so first and foremost we have we have different drills that we do in training right one is <laughs> called anticipation and reading the game so for example a team like say a barcelona a man city and an arsenal they pass the ball a lot all right so you as the referee you don't need to be within 10, 12, 15 yards of that passing, passing team. You don't need to be. So you watch them and then you anticipate when they're going to have that long pass. So we have some anticipation drill, some going ahead of the game drill, some, some, some ball movement drills. All of that we have in training. But, but the, the team that passes the ball a lot, all right? Some teams will high press them, some teams will back up. It's when they back up, that is when the referee presence is needed. It's when the high press referee presence is needed also. So, for example, you have a one player, say a Harlan, pressing Arsenal, right? They will yeah. pass the ball, pass the ball, pass the ball around him. Referee don't need to be in that half. Okay. So, he have to get ready when that transition is coming, when they're going forward. If you get oh. what I'm saying. Yeah, man. I'm, 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 play a tiki -taka, uh, hard pressing football. Referee has to be there. Every single movement. <laughs> Yeah. So you have to know the game, know the players. Oh, so basically, on a modern in the game, on a what certain team. So, so basically, against like Man City and Barcelona, it is a more easier for the referee. Time, him no. Yep, yep, very much easy, very much easy. So, give me an example with two team. With I say two team are playing, it will be very difficult to to ref the game. All right, so locally or overseas. Anyway, anyway, locally or overseas. All right. So, like a, um, like a, like a Burnley, like a Fulham, you know? Yeah. Like um, Chelsea and Didi. If you have, if you have a Man City and um, Arsenal, easy to rep. Tottenham, Chelsea, not so easy to rep. A Man City, a Man U, easy to rep. Because one play together football, one play counteracting football, counterattacking football. Mm -hmm. 
So the, the referees would have known these things ahead of time. Even if you're going, if I'm going to Saudi Arabia to do a league and they send me the fixture and stuff, I would go on the internet, I would look at how the teams play, look at who are the point persons, stuff like that. So referee, referees don't just go in a game blindly. Oh. Yeah, we don't. So you we guys... Don't touch players. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. So you guys basically... So one of the things I really want, because I'm always... I'm a trainer. I'm a personal trainer. See? And me I talk to a young referee. And him just a get in the game. Mm -hmm. But I tell him, say, you are an athlete. And me I tell him, say, nutrition of your part. You have to eat properly. Because if you want result, all of these stuff, you need to be on par. Just like you are just like an athlete. Yep, and I yep, say, no, I say, if you really want to go to the next level, you have to go into the gym, you have to eat properly, you have to get the proper rest, and all of them stuff. Yep, so, yep, as a referee, so is that so? Yeah, man, 100%. 100%. We have what we call the MA course every every year when I was a FIFA referee, every year. So you'd have like FIFA instructors come down from overseas and we we meet, say, um, at UA, at Captain Horace Burrell for like a week, you know. We go through mm. training schedule, we go through nutrition, we go through training, we go through rest, all of that. So what you're saying, absolutely true. Referees are athletes, just like footballers, um, track athletes, you name it. Referees are athletes, and nutrition is very, very important. That, that's, that's, why, that's why I tell one of my colleagues the other day in the Um, He's saying, Tyrell, the referees, they get poor and this and that. I say, the referees, think about it. The referees know the laws that they give. It is not that they are poor enough. The problem is, one, there are more teams in the league now, so you need more referees. But is it same referees? The referees influx doesn't change. So you have a referee going to fourth official down a sentence, Turn up on him foot for 90 minutes and then tomorrow in their anita ref. So that's well, that's that, that's 90 minutes times two. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm have to go to school Monday morning, go teach. I'm have to drop off him kids at school and stuff like that. So it's not that they are poor, it's just that they need rest and they're doing too many games. I told him. Oh, so, so in Jamaica, the they need more referee then? Need a lot more referees, brother. Oh. One referee had a three game in a two day. Yeah. Impossible. Over when you're a white badge referee at overseas, too much per week. Too much per week. Jamaica do four or five matches per week. White badge persons. Yeah. What white badge? FIFA. 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 Yeah. Once you're white badge, you're FIFA. Yeah. Oh, so all right. So tell me something now with with that now. So, oh, you becomes a FIFA referee. All right, so the process is, is not easy. So first, you have to dominate your parish. So you have different parish associations. So you have like Manchester, Kassafa, St. Catherine. Dominate it means you have to do well in your parish. So you do mm -hmm. well in your parish, and you want to the bright part they're looking at, and they recommend you to the panel. So the panel is the top referees in the country. So once you reach to the panel referees, they will look at you, put you in some Premier League games, put you in some knuckle games, and see how well you manage pressure. From there, then you're gonna put you in finals. You're gonna do semi-final and finals. Once you pass that test, then they may send you to a CONCACAF under 15 in the summer. It can either be female or male under 15. So when you go there, the CONCACAF instructors look at you and will say, okay, this one need a more a, a one a one year off, need to brush up on this. This one need to lose some weight. In fitness, need to improve. Or this one passed, yeah, we put him on the list January. That's how it works. Oh. Yeah. So is is FIFA referee, they, when they retire, they get paid? Um, no, you don't get paid when you retire. You get paid when you do matches. So so okay. so you have different stages of a, of a referee life, you know. So if you are a retired FIFA referee, you can either continue to work in your parish or you can continue to work in CFU or CONCACAF or FIFA. Mm -hmm. Like Mr. Prendigas, he was a FIFA referee and he got elevated to become a FIFA instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, very few of them in the world. Very, very few. Mm. So, 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 so tell me something. So, the mud fee is good for a referee. 
Yeah, man, yeah, man. You have, you have FIFA referees who get more money than me who have a, 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 a bachelor's degree. Oh, so... Yeah. So a typical example, I went to Canada 2016 to the World Cup qualifier. And that match fee, we stayed there like four days. That match fee was 3,000 US dollars. And that was dead. You get free hotel, you get free plane, everything, everything is free. And for those four days, I got 3,000 US dollars. So just the, Oh, and that was back then, managed. 2016. 2016. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, We're okay. qualifying for the 2018 World Cup. Oh, okay. All right. So so for you in Jamaica, so you are being you are being one of the top referees in, in the country. Referee, right? So what are some of the tough games that decision where you make where you you know sometimes me as a player will make mistake or yes, you know, start, will make a mistake. Like we can't sleep. You ever make a mistake in a game where it just the conscience just a bad idea? Yeah man. Yeah, man, a lot of times, a lot of times. As a referee, if you don't make a mistake, one, you're perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And if you make a mistake and don't learn from it, something is wrong with you. I do a game already on a Sunday, and for the whole week, me at school, me can't eat, but me go home, me can't sleep, whole week. And it was a simple, it was a simple missed penalty. One was a missed penalty, one was a penalty that should have never been a penalty. You understand? Mm -hmm. But you learn from these things. You, you have what is called um, context clue. And I use it in my training all the time. So not because you see the hand move towards the ball, mean the ball can hit. The ball hit your hand. The ball can hit right here where my sleeve is. So from mm. my sleeve to my shoulder is no handball. So not mm. because you see the hand move, which means a handball. You get me? So had yes. I been in the right position, then we wouldn't call penalty. <laughs> okay. So as a referee, the position. I think Point, is very, very important. important. Very, very important. Position Just like a goalkeeper. Exactly. 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 Okay. Position, position and fitness. I wouldn't I wouldn't go into judgment, but position and fitness is what made the referees separate themselves all over the world. So position and fitness. And fitness. Because if you're fit, you can't you're gonna be in the center circle all the time. Like when I go to US, go watch some, some tournaments. When yeah. you fit, you can do everywhere where the ball is. And position yeah. help you to see, to make the proper call, yeah. which, which, which is an angle. Okay. So, position and fitness is the key for you key to be to a better referee. Key to referee. Okay, fair. But, I am. Um, what, 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 what would you say about referee? What the difference with refing in Jamaica and in Kankaka? All right. So in Jamaica, and I will always say this until the person travel or get a feel of what it is like to ref overseas. In Jamaica, it's very difficult. Very, very difficult, especially at the top level. All right. So how many teams can put together 10, 12, 14 passes every week? Very few. Very few consistent. When you go in CONCACAF now, it's very easy because these, te these teams, they put passes together. All they have to do, run into position, make the call. And, and they play very hard and physical. It's a, it's a difference with hard and physical with nasty. In Jamaica, a lot of the players, they play nasty. So they play to hurt other players. While overseas, it's, it's really physical. Nothing nasty about it. Going hard, you know, and they continue to play. But but it's easy. And any one of the white ball referees, they can tell you. Overseas, it's easier to ref. Um, in Jamaica, you have a time when you have you can pick two teams. It's like foot tennis. The ball goes to your side, come back. The ball goes to your side, come back. It's like a foot tennis. You don't know where to run, go. So it's harder. <laughs> so it's harder. Harder, it is harder. Mm. People, guys, we have some technical issue. The new things they might give me some idiot. So my apology, guys. I was trying my best, but this is what the best we can do. So I realize it, the feedback is coming on my side. So I have some work to do. So sorry about that. What would you say to the people them now? 
say the referee them FIFA referee them in Jamaica. No, they do better in Concacaf than Jamaica. A lot of people have problems here. People say the referee them no good, but a other coach say no. Watch them same referee when them go overseas. Them do hundred percent. We need the same when them come to Jamaica. What would you say? Exactly. I thought it was done. I think uh, three or four years ago, Ryan, and yeah. they had the administration, they had JFF, and they had referees, and another set. I think it was four sets, if I'm not mistaken. And you know who was number one when FIFA ranked them? The referees. No, if you have the referees doing better than the JFF, doing better than the players, the coaches, everything else. Something is wrong. Because these referees, they get exposed. They get exposed to the best material, the best playing surfaces, and they rep the best teams in Kankata. Now, how can you say that these referees are no good when the referees came out number one out of those poor things I just did? It's impossible. Mm -hmm. No, you take, you take, I, I, I said this, I said this many, many, many times ago. I don't know if you watch the EPL. If you should take Jamaica, three best referees, three best referees, you name them, the nation, the other two, put them into England, take England, three best referees out here. Remember, you know, we don't have technology like them. We don't have VAR. We don't have communication set and stuff like that. If you should do a swap, I'm telling you, Ryan, I'm guaranteeing you the amount of mistake they would make here in Jamaica as opposed to Jamaican referees going to the M. EPL. May I tell you? May I, it's child for cheese. One, they don't move. That's one. In England, they don't move. When I say they don't move, they don't run and put under. They follow the play most times. Just watch the game. Just watch mm. a Jamaica game with a top referee and watch EPL with a top referee. Why it's like that? Because they have VAR. They have a lot more things to aid them. Jamaica referees, we don't have that. We don't have VAR. We make a one call and that's it. But mm. what we do well, we run into position. We are fit. And we cut angle. Hmm. In the English Premier League, they depend on technology. The man the outside position, they don't pull up the flag. He wait to the player, play out, play out, play out, and then they see the flag go. Hmm. In Jamaica, we see it, we call it. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't make the goalkeeper and the attacker collide. We prevent collision. You hmm. get what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're saying to me, Jamaica referee, you take the chief best referee out of Jamaica. And put them in England, they will do much better than the chief. I'm not asking, I'm not asking. Just what as of today, just watch the England referee. Look how they move, look how they make their cars. They have technology, they have technology. Take away the tech. Remember, we don't have that in Jamaica. We don't have that. I'm yeah. the first one to bring a communication set to Jamaica, I'm the first one to bring a sub board to Jamaica. Yeah. But every week, we ref the games without them. <laughs> And, and they're doing well. They're doing well. So when you say you bring it, you buy it? Yeah, man, I bought it. I bought it because I see what the referees use on counter cup. And I see what they use in their game to make them a better referee. So yeah. I bought one for myself. At the time, I paid like 600 US dollars for it. Mm -hmm. So all the Monday night games they see me doing is my personal communication set. Mm -hmm. And after that, no person start to do the same thing. I was the person who bought a sub board. A manual support for myself because mm. I see what they're doing overseas and I take it back to Jamaica. Mm. Yeah. So position and fitness. All right. Fitness. So, yeah, yeah. Definitely. yeah, definitely. So, talk to me now because he has accomplished a lot. When I look at the resume, you're traveling 30 different countries to ref. Football game, international game. Talk to me about. Yeah, talk to me about that. You traveling to this country. Which one of the country first? Which one of the country them are the most toughest you, you went to to refer football game? Referee, Honduras. <laughs> Honduras. Without a doubt, Honduras. Yeah. Honduras what? is the only country I go. And just like how you know, watch um, news, I used to they put sheets over the bodies and stuff. They don't black it out in Honduras. And the news, they don't black it out. You see the person lying down there with the gunshot wound, with 
the blood running beside them raw on the news. When you go to the stadium, they have some lights that they shine in your eye. Laser lights? Yeah. Right. They use coins. They use some little fine coins and throw to the fence and throw at you. Right? They, 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 they urinate in bottles and tie it like suck suck and throw it at you. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's a hundred euros. Like. So that 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 look light. I, I, I remember Jamaica player in Honduras last World Cup qualify, and the referee was having difficulty. Referee yeah. having problems to see because they putting things in him. Right, right. Shining things in if, him. If, if 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 they are caught, they can be thrown out of the stadium. It is it is illegal, but people people find a way to do it. Yeah, mm. and it's dangerous, very very dangerous. Wow. <laughs> so you say Andy Rose are the toughest place. Where, yeah, the where, toughest where, first place where, where, ever gone. It was a club championship and a U17. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was my first FIFA appointment, U17 2015. And then it was a CONCACAF club championship. Yeah, but the crowd is boisterous, man. Everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most horrible places I've been to, to officiate. <laughs> So one of the nice places you went to, I you went to more than 30 different. What are the, one of the places where you have a good game and you feel really relaxed and comfortable? Yeah, more than one. Um, Cuba, Canada, um, Cayman, yeah, US too, US, Haiti. You get some very good treatment at those places. Yeah, very, very good treatment. They, they treat you like royalty. Some places where you go, you have like the, the bomb squad behind you, you know, especially World Cup qualifiers. They don't let you go anywhere by yourself. So mm -hmm. person outside of your hotel room, you know, if you go into the 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 the, the match, they would escort you. You go into your change room, stuff like that. They will be outside waiting on you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so referee have, have this thing where they meet up together. What what, what you guys do? Meet up somewhere before you guys go to the venue and come together. Uh, what do you mean? Like a match day or what? Match day. Yeah, man. So, for example, if if we're traveling, say, to, to Jackson today, um, Sunday, to do a match, and we will communicate before. So, the appointment is sent um, days before via email or WhatsApp, whichever means, and and you would you would link up. So, two of us from, from Kingston, maybe one from St. Catherine, one from whether Portland or St. Elizabeth. So we all communicate who we're going to, sorry, who we're going to drive, who we're going to pick up where, and we just meet at the venue. So we have what is called a pre-match as well. We have a pre-match um, pre instruction. So pre-match is where like the referee will talk, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Whenever a hole is close to you, you call, I leave. If you hear me, double the whistle, tut, 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 wait on me and go first. Some referees will say that the penalty box, leave it to me. All right. Some referees will be like that. They want to make, be the one to call the fouls in the penalty box. While some referees will tell you, 15, 20 yards from you, that's your call. Everything else is mine. So we have what is called pre match instruction. So that is done before the match. And then if any tweaking to, to, to be done, it can, can happen just before the match, like just before you walk onto the field or at halftime. It depends. Okay, fair enough. And let's get back to Jamaica. Tell me which game is the most difficult game you ever have. Because I know you have a lot of Monday night game. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. That one that you see on my, my ref page, ref corner, that was the semi-final uh, Arnett Garden versus Humble Lion, right? Yeah. That, was, that was difficult to somewhat, but I managed it. All right, so the thing is, Ryan, we went to um, referee training this Saturday. So we have panel training this Saturday in, at Jamalco in Clarendon, all right? I wasn't on any game, you know? I wasn't on any game. The referee who's supposed to do that Monday night game, he said he can't do the game. He can't do the game. I don't know if because he's from Clarendon, are the team too bad for him? I don't know. So you know who the next person in training at the game is? He said, are you going to do the game? And as a referee, I love challenges. I never ever back down. If you say me right now, go do a game at Iraq or Haiti, me gone. I love challenges. So when them throw me in the fire, I say, all right, I'm going to deal with it. 
So from the moment when they mentioned me to do that game in Oregon, I started to prepare myself. So I started to prepare myself. I started to say, you know, who are the troublemakers? Who are the players we have to look out forward for? And we just start focus. Everything else just dead until the match finished. So like on a typical match day, you know, I would, I would make sure I have this pool at school. So when I finish school, like 3.34, I would go in the pool, like say 5 o'clock, anywhere between 5 or 5.20, 5.30, about. take a nice little swim, do some stretches and stuff, fresh, and then we just drive, go to the venue. So I reach the venue like um, 6.30, quarter to 7. About then, the, the morning night was like 8.30 back then. Yeah. So, so that was really my toughest game locally. Wow. So when you say, when you say, troublemaker, what do you mean by that? The player them who give trouble. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So you have some players, all right? You have some players. I'm not going to call you, but you have some players, right? You are playing, Ryan. I am the referee. You are playing. If you get fouled, don't continue. You have some players, they get fouled, stop the game and give them them foul. While you have some players, they get fouled, they might go, they might go fan you off, they might go make them wear and try advance. All right? And next thing again, you have some players, every single call, they try to, to, to open your face. Every single call against their team. You understand? You have some players who, if I call for your team, he's going to come and try to argue for you. You understand? Yeah. So stuff like that we call troublemakers. And you have some players who are peacemakers. So whatever the situation is, it might come between you and the referee and push out the next one and try to defuse it. Mm. So you have to know who the troublemakers are. You have to, you have to lick them from early. Mm. You have to say, not tonight. Hey, you have the card, you have to use it. Stuff like that. Okay, so you ever go into a, you ever into in referee one of these big game, man? You feel like you lost control of the game. How do you set the temper knowing that you is the man running the game? Um, as in lose control. I've never, um, how should I put it? I never thought I lost control of a game. Maybe towards the latter part of the game, because towards the latter part of the game, you know, concentration goes. Concentration goes, you, you start to get, you know, maybe dizzy. Maybe, you know, you, you forget um, that you should stop your watch. You forget that you give this person a yellow card, stuff like that. That is towards the end of the game, maybe. 78 minutes, 88 minutes, stuff like that. But in terms of losing the game, I don't remember doing a game and, and, and thinking that I lost control of the game. Because respect is one. And I can tell you, of, of, of my 20 odd years in officiating, I would think 99% of the players, the coaches, the spectators respect me. Respect me. So once they see Tyrell make a call or make a decision, most of them would accept it. After the game, they will come to you and say, yeah, you know, this and this and that, Tyrell, but, you know, a good game, man. You understand? But I, I, don't, I don't remember of me losing control of a game. You know? I've had games that call off. I've, I've games where the referees were correct, and because of the unruly spectators, the manager, the coaches, you know, them end the game right there. It is a Jackie Bell final. The assistant referee was 200% correct. Now, I wanted the game to continue. And the the the, 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 the the supporters wanted none of it. Police couldn't control it. Gunshot boss, people have to take for themselves. But <laughs> it's not that the referees were incorrect. The yeah. correct call was made. <laughs> yeah. You know? So tell me some, spectator. When we are playing, our coach always say, yo, <laughs> when you make the tucker, you leave the scene. How do you identify? Especially yeah. when the phone make and yeah. Other opponent that get in your face. How do you yeah. identify the player when he make the tackle and sometimes he's screechy away from the play? All right, very very good question. So in refereeing, we have what is called, and I have it in one of my videos. It's called the three eyes. So you have identify, isolate, and issue. All right. So as a referee, you have to be very very observant, and this starts from walking onto the pitch. You know, you have some players they take their risk. You have some players in pink boots, some players in Nike boots, in whatever. So in refing the game, you would have known who the number 10 is. Number 10 player one, green shoes. You understand? He cut him socks. 
him tape up him wrist. You understand? The number 11 play upon the wing. The number 13, we hear blank. So once he commit the tackle there, worse if we have communication set. So not, not everybody focus on right here. So the tackle just make right here in our bundle, three, four, five players. He take for himself. The AR would have said, Tyrell, number 12, number 12. See what down this side, number 12. So right away, he make a note, and I would have heard number 12. So if you don't the injured player right here, we all know a number 12 would do it. All right? What, what, some, what some countries do, and FIFA pick up on it, so you know the Japanese and the Chinese and these countries, they, they kind of look alike. So the number 11 would have committed a foul. He would have been on a yellow card already. You know what they did? They farm a huddle and switch the number 11 jersey with number 17 jersey. So they farm a huddle right there on the field. While the referee deal with the injured player, they farm a huddle and they switch the jersey quick, quick. So this was done at a World Cup. In a World Cup? This was done in a World Cup game. It's on a FIFA video. <laughs> so, they, they, so they, and them just take off the shirt and put on it. <laughs> right. So they farm a huddle, yet neither of them, because they knew. They knew this would have been a red card for that person. So they yeah. found the hole right away. The number 17 drop going there and switch jersey with number 11. And they put on opposite jerseys and come back out. They even like a pray them a pray and not talk, you know. You know, yeah. but it's too quick. Yeah. This didn't take 30 seconds. So when that happened, how, how do you solve that? The referee who saw it. So the referee was dealing with the dealing with the, uh, the injured, injured player. The yeah. court official and the other AR, they picked it up and they say, because what happened is, you know, remember if you change, if you change your jersey, you have to change your shorts as well. Mm -hmm. So they never change the shorts. I number was on the jersey and the shorts. Mm. Right. So they told the referee and, and, and the referee number 11 got the second yellow, which is red, and the number 17 got a yellow. Wow. But, but as referees, we have to pick up on these things quickly. Okay. Yeah. So, so oh, players, it... players know tricks. Referees know tricks. Have to know tricks as well. Yeah. So, all right. Um. So, my boy. Um. Big up yourself, brother. No flow of respect. Look like he's the next referee. So, how oh, important yeah. it is for the referee to play the game? Is it make him a better referee when he play the game and understand the game a little bit should, more? Should. 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 In the have to. Cause the person you have, to... have to. Yeah. Just like in track and field. Um. Stephen Francis. Stephen never run a lap in his life. But he produced some of the best athletes in the world. All right? But some of the best referees used to play the game. I know here for Jamaica, Mr. Prendigas, um, Parchment, um, Odette, Stephanie Dale Easing, Nation, Oshia Nation. A lot mm -hmm. of these referees are used to play the game. Kilo mm -hmm. Williams, um, Garnet, Valdin Legister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is the young female referee, right? The yeah, rest. she was the fourth official for the year with the pop here. She was the fourth official and the women's match of the day, USA and Brazil. Yeah. To the man has to tell her who yeah. I yeah. um, Oh, oh, see, see. Is that yeah. Jamaican ref? Eh? Is that Jamaican ref, Daniel Smith? Are you the young ref telling me about? My name is. Yeah, Danny, Daniel Smith. He said, yeah. Tyrell, tell Ryan who I am. I'm not picking up the name. Yeah. I, I'm not sure who is the who is the referee. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not picking up. But um, you know, I like Odet though. I think Odet is one of the best referees in Jamaica, though. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Without a doubt. The top female in Jamaica, without a doubt, she's in the top four overall. Without a doubt. Mm. Without a doubt. Her fitness, her reading the game. You know, getting into position to make crucial decisions. Yeah. But as Mr. Ryan, the referees, isn't that they're not good here in Jamaica. They are being overworked. And plus, they don't have the tools that EP referees have. They don't have it. So who, who's for who job that to get all of these referees, these tools? They need? Uh, to, the be honest, to be honest, I don't want to say it's a federation. Because I know in other countries, the federation provides it. But then again... These referees who have white badges, it's up on you to have the tool to do your job. Because you're getting a lot of money. They're getting mm. a lot of money. So it never, it never take me anything to buy one for myself because I know what you can do. Mm. You get what I mean? I say, you're the game with a communication set. 
you actually see it before it happens. Hey, watch him, watch him, watch him. I come with that elbow. Hey, watch him. A penalty that I know, penalty. So you talk to the AR. He's talking to you while the game is going on. Why we don't have communication and say, yeah, yeah, guess on spell. Mm. So your advice would be to, to these, some of these referees, spend a twelve, fifteen hundred dollars US and yeah, you'll be man. get your tool, man. Yeah, because trust me, and a good month, and a good month, these referees are made more than six, seven thousand US dollars, and a good month. Mm. Yeah, so spend some money on yourself. I always say you need a tool to to officiate. Mm. You understand? So mm. I would let it up to the federation or, or my parish to give me the tool to work. You are the one who gonna use the tool. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, fair enough. So all right now. So talk to me now about your time going overseas and to ref games. So you were telling me about some of the country that you went to. And it was a good time as a FIFA referee. Yeah, man. Very, very good time. I always relish the moment going overseas, you know, because once you get that appointment, you know, you accept it, you know, you step on the plane, it's like everything just let, you know, it does, it does, it does feel the tension off you because you have put in the hard work, mm -hmm. you have done the job and the superiors look at you and say, yeah, you deserve this job or this tournament. It's for you to go out there now and to prove your worth. You know, mm -hmm. so it the, 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 the few years I was on the list, it was a great, great experience for me. I I wouldn't take back anything. Trust me, I have good, I have bad, I have indifferent. But, you know, I learned from every single experience. The, the referee who did the Nations League final, I put a picture on my my WhatsApp. The referee who did Nations League final with um, yeah. Mexico and USA. Yeah. We went to the Olympic qualifier together. We did several tournaments together. Drew Fisher. But guess what? I was much older than he was. But you have persons in your federation who push you also. If Nathan is not getting the push and Drew Fisher is getting the push, who do you think going to get the bigger games and the better tournaments? That's how it works. So, 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 so the federation have a part to play with the referee? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. And when I say the federation, if you should break down, the federation has a referee department. In it. Yeah. The federation has a referee department, just like it has um, reggae boys and reggae girls. It has a referee department. And the referee department determines who goes to what tournament. So if an uh, under 20 World Cup appointment comes for Tyrell, and, and the referee department said, no, man. Tyrell lazy and Tyrell uh, trainer, we are Tyrell have problem. Him now got a certain match. Then I'm going to remove Tyrell name and put Omar Brown. That's how it works. Oh. Yep, that's how it works. Okay. So it has what? to pass through that department before it gets to your email. Okay. So what are some of your accomplishments you made in Jamaica between schoolboy football, morning, um, the Premier League and the Dakar Stack Up. What are some of the have, big events? I have events? done all the final series. I have done all the final series. You name it. From Manning Cup. I, I, I run line at Manning Cup. People don't know this. I run a line at Manning Cup final. Yeah. I was a fourth official at Manning Cup final. Yeah. And I rep the Casta Cup final. I rep Champions League final. Champions Cup is what back then they used to call it Flow Cup. So the best yeah. two schoolboy football in Nato, yeah. I read that one some years ago. I think Carnival College and somebody played in in, in Mantigo Bay. I don't remember who it was it. But I read that final. Um referee of the year, international referee of the year. Yeah, you name it. Mm. Yeah, so I, I done it all. I never yeah. got the push. Yeah. Yeah, you think you have got the pit the, the push to go to that next big level? No, 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 no. No. Why do you think and that? For more than one, for more than one reason. Um, as I said, the person don't, never don't hard like enough. you. No, it's not. It's not. I've never failed a fitness test. I've never done poorly on a tournament. It's just that you have A and B, right? Mm. If you don't like A for whatever reason, if you think maybe he's too cocky or he talks up too much 
are is always asking about money, stuff like that, they're going to sideline A and push B. So let me give you a typical example. I'm not going to go in depth in it. Let me give you a typical example. So 2019, I was in Bradenton, Florida, with a set of referees from Jamaica. So we normally go away, like in the summer or in December, to do tournaments overseas, you know? And mm. that is separate from Concord Field. That is just us applying to tournaments and go over there and officiate. Nothing to do with CONCACAF, nothing to do with FIFA. All right? So while I was there and stuff, the referees here in Jamaica, they wanted us to restart the Premier League in January and we were owed one year money. Let me go again. Referees here in Jamaica, they were owed one year money. You know, the referees have to spend their own money. So if I go to Reno, I have to spend my money, go to Reno, I go to Montego Bay, stuff like that. So I said, no, this can't work. The clubs get in their money every month. Players are get paid, coaches are get paid, but the referee will not owe them six months, eight months, ten months. It, it cannot be fair. I mean, I depend on my kids' money every time to go ref matches. I mean, I'll get it back to six or seven or eight months. You know, I was ridiculed. I was ridiculed. So I said, I don't care. <laughs> I told them I don't care. So that was one of the main reasons why they took me off the list. And I don't care. I said, I have my work at 11. I don't care zero. And the, the, the radio stations called me. TVJ called me. Everybody has called me and wanted to do an interview. And I said, no. You know why I'm not going to do it? I know how the system works. One, if I do that interview, they're going to stop every referee like myself from going overseas. Because they need a letter to go overseas to officiate. You need a letter to say that you're in good standing with your FA. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And then other persons coming through the system, like a, like a Damian Williams, like a, 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 a Stefan Duar, like a Rolando Bennett, they are going to use Tyrell and stifle those persons. So I say, I'm not going to do no interview. I'm just going to let it play out like that. I'm going to let football be the winner at the end of the day. Uh -huh. So if you talk out for your money, then put it aside. If you don't talk up to them, you can make a trap bottom for them, you can make a, a pants for them or shoes, me not depend on something. You have oh, yes, Christmas deals. Yes. Me I tell you, me not, me not afraid. People know me. I'm not afraid to talk. You have mm. Christmas deals. I'm over house and mouth. You're trained by myself. Where I live, I live about four or five miles from, from Mandela, the turn of people put work. I run out there every morning, 5.36. And sometimes my wife say, we are going up on the road to early call. Are you alone? I run from the road, man, and shoot you. And I say, no, put on my FIFA jacket. I'm run it. So I have those days when I come down, I lie down for all two hours. Me alone on the train. So when I go for me, I tell you, no money can't get them. I'm going to trap bottom and no shoes can't get them. You understand? <laughs> but a lot of things go on and people don't know. But I'm not afraid. I talk yeah. it as it is. You get oh me? Head, yeah, man. But it is a real, real thing me I tell you, right? I mean, I go around the corner and tell you. When they take me off the list, everybody was shocked. I said, I'm not going public. I'm not going to go public. Because I know what can happen. I mean, I want to stifle a youth where I come to. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Worse yeah. than from Kasafa, I know the system works. I have never failed a fitness test. I have never done poorly at any. All the big matches them in the Jamaica. All the Monday night games. One time they call me Mr. Monday night. They call yeah. Tuffy Mr. Monday night. Me see you every night on Monday night as a youth in a Jamaica. Right. All right. All the games have potential to mash up. Who them send for? Tyrell. So how can you, when they took me off the list, you have three other persons worse than me. <laughs> I'm just low it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. It's football, bro. This is my life. Mm. This is my life. So but I never, know, say, I never know, I never know, say when you have a problem, think nice, sweet, over the side. I never know, say when you have a problem over there. FIFA. No, yeah, man, my problem, man. they my problem. Hmm. Yeah, man, my problem. It's just that people afraid to talk. People mm. are afraid to talk because if you talk, they take you off the list and they take away the white badge from you. But because oh. I don't care, I have my job at you. Know. Mm. Mm. So tell me yes. something. Is when when you are the FIFA, when he's a FIFA referee, you get you're supposed to get paid from your federation separate from no get from no, FIFA. You get, you get paid. When you do matches, you get paid. Oh, so yeah. It's not like says a set where you get monthly. No. Yeah, when right. they do much, you get paid. When you get matches, yeah. Because you could be a referee for five years and do two matches. 
while I could be a referee for one year, I'll be gone 20 match. Mm. Yeah, so you have to do matches. You have to perform, do matches, and you get paid. They send you in US dollar. Plane ticket, everything taken care of. Five star hotel. You, you travel first class. So FIFA do it deal with referee good. Yes, man. Yes, first man. class. Even CONCACAF too. But only okay. FIFA games you get to travel first class. Yeah. Okay. So being a FIFA being a FIFA referee, you can earn out of it. May I tell you. Mm. So you travel first class when you're a FIFA referee doing FIFA tournaments or like a World Cup qualifier, those kind of stuff. Anything FIFA appoints you to. But remember, mm. Kanko can appoint you as well, you know, and see if you appoint you. Yeah. So you do do referee get injured? Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. I, I, I had an injury that was old for like eight months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, referee do get injured. Okay. Hamstring yeah. injury, ankle injury. Come on, we are athletes, you know. Just like what you tell the, the person when he was training him. You have to yeah. eat properly. You have to take your supplements. And you have to exercise and rest. You understand? So referees are like athletes. Mm. So, so tell me something now. So it's like the same thing in, 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 in. So like if you talk up, so you, at that time, you know that you're looking about the future of the young referee coming up. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't talk up, they would have blacklist other people too? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They took me off, you know, because I was, I, I, I was, I was very low in the group. We have a referee group, you know. This is how referee work, right? We have a referee group, right? Yeah. Within the referee group, it's just referees alone. Mm. But because they want to surpass Tyrell, or they want Tyrell to be sidelined, they screenshotted the messages and sent to the instructors, or sent to the power that be. Because this is supposed to be a talk within With us. Yeah, man, this is supposed to be a talk within us and say, yo, we now do no more game till we get the money. We now do this, we now do that. But some of the persons, they were silent because they wanted the international matches. While some of them screenshot the messages and send it to Tyrell name, say, Tyrell, I do this, a John Brown, I do this, a Omar, I do this. So we think I got to them three persons. Then, then sideline them. That's oh. how it works. Oh. So, so they're they... not together, they're not united. Look yeah. in the US, look when you have MLS. When you have MLS, all the referees stick together. And they say, we now do not give, we now do not this. The mafia use other referees, no MLS referees, no pro referees. But we're not united in Jamaica. Oh, so that I, I want to... If I, if I speak up, it a hurt other persons. Huh? That's the biggest thing we have in Jamaica. Them people, them, 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 them want you to speak up for take your spot. Yep, yep. And that's what happened to me. That's what happened to me, bro. 2019, I never regret it. I never regret it. So when they, when they come off, you know, go back? No. When, when they take you off the list, they wanted me to wear a counter badge and still to do Premier League games. And I said, no, brother, I won't. You're going to take me off a fever list. I'm better than enough for the referee them still have fun. I don't want me to come to Premier League games see them with. You might tell me about my mother. I want me to wear a counter badge. So I'm telling them to go take that and eat it. So, so, so come they done a career? No, man, I still ref, you know, because I am responsible for training the Kingston and St. Andrew referees. Mm -hmm. So I still, I just don't do Premier League games. I still oh. do Kassafa, Super League, Major League, Manning Cup, that kind of stuff, all of that thing. I just don't do the Premier League games. Oh, for how long, how long you do that? I still doing it now, man. You still referee now? Yeah, man, I still ref now. Really? Yeah, even the big game the other day in a Manning Cup, man, when they sent for judges and, and, and CC. I mean, ref it in a stadium. Big game for the attack about St. Judges College and Clarendon College. I mean, like, no, I think you retire from... From FIFA. Retire from FIFA. But I still officiate. You still officiate? <laughs> yeah, is. man. You can go on YouTube and type in CC versus St. Judges College, man. I mean, ref it. <laughs> big, big game at stadium. Semi-final at Champions Cup. Big, big game. Me ref it. Do a lot of games this season. Oh, so you... I oh, think you retired. I retired retire from FIFA. As mm. I said, when they took me off the list, I could offer a whole lot more years, but I decided not to because that's a disrespect. But if you take off a big referee like me, take off a white badge, I want to give me a counter of badge because I speak up for my rights and for, for my money. No, somebody said I'm not doing it. 
But I still appreciate, man, because as I said, football is my life and I, I am giving back. This is me giving back to a lot of the young referees. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I think, I swear to God, I think you're finished. Me, no, no, so, man, still you're still, still going. going. So, how old are you now? Going, man. Yeah. I'm going 22 years now. But I'm really young. I'm 42. I start early. I'm 42. Wow. Yeah. So, is referee of an age where they have to stop? No, no. It's just that if you get older and you can do certain games, you can keep up with the game, then they may give you a prep school game or, 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 or Pepsi. Mm. But we have referees in Kasafa who are 70 at the year old, 76, 78, 74, still refereeing. Mm. You know, yeah. country club, right? Yeah, man. Good lines, yeah, man. man, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've given yeah. him in the weekend, week gone. A year is what do it final, man. Yeah, man. I, I went in, I saw him. He did from in the 90s. Yeah, and yeah. I went yeah. to Kasafa, I saw him. Yeah, because he live on the same street like from Rima. And him riding bicycle go everywhere, man. Everywhere, bro. He used to keep a boy so they know that. Yes, man. Yes. Yeah, man. Big goalkeeper back then. Wow. Yeah, man. Clive Dixon. Like, you just imagine Karim, Karim uncle, you know that? Karim yeah. Dixon uncle. Yeah, so I'm going to come from the same road with Dixon okay. and Sh okay. and the one of them and things. So I know right. the one right. of them family and things. Wow. All right, all right. Wow. But you know, all my day, I can't believe say so still at the ref. Uh, when yeah, you're man. The... Still at the ref. I'm going to say, man, let's go up on YouTube, type in CC versus Judges, Champions Cup. Yeah. I am the referee. Wow. Even last season before Whisper, Whisper, the TV game, I was the one when Whisper mashed up um, Mona. Sis. When KC mashed up Mona, still of East. I was the referee. Mm. Oh. Sun hat game. Mm. So, 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 this kind of kind of look a bit shock up my brain. So, you know, you're just now ref the overseas game, is just Manning Cup and the. Yeah, the Manning Cup Super League, Major League. Yeah, basically. And so, I, I am the fitness trainer for Casa, Kingston and St. Andrew. So if you want to ref Premier League, you can get that? Or you just donate the Premier League? Yeah, it, it, it is a lot, to be honest. Because I have two young two young boys. I have one eight and one four. So the, the work that requires to me to ref at the Premier League is a lot of work. So mm -hmm. I have to train. I have to do a lot of training, you know, to get back to that level of fitness. It's just fitness. That's it. Everything else is deal already. Mm. So it is just fitness. So for me to get there is a lot of work, and we don't have the time right now. Okay. You know what I'm saying. So, 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 so you travel to Honduras, you travel to Canada, you travel, to, you travel to Guatemala, you travel to Panama, Costa Rica, Cuba. In the space, of how many years you you be a FIFA referee? Uh, 2015 to 2019. So four year. Yeah. So you're in your peak now if you're still on the FIFA referee. You're in your peak now, in your prime. Um, I would say I was in my prime like a year before they took me out. Between 2018 there about. Because mm. 2016, I think 2015, 2016, I get referee of the year. I was voted international referee of the year. I get about five, six trophies that year. I was mm. really flying that year. It's like every other week we fly out. Every other week. The whole year. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So so even the World Cup. You know, if I was pushed and stuff like that. But it's just, you know, it's just God's work. I have no regrets. I have no regrets any at all. Oh, boy, may I tell you, it's when you talk up you know, the, you know, the system mess up still, no, brother. Mess up, brother. Mess up. That's what a lot of people don't know, you know? A lot of persons. Not brother, I'm not like, I'm not like, the Bridget. I mean, I like it. It's because me the man, like man talk up a lot. It's because yeah. me the man talk up a lot. Yeah. I don't like when them, them try to silent people, them type of way, the bitch. Yep. Yep. When, and you see, it. when you outspoke in them think you are the bad one. Right. But, yeah, exactly talk right. right. And that is what happened to me. Because, me now go see foolishness, Ryan. Me now go see foolishness and, and let it slide, brother. If referees are worth six, seven, eight months, well, we can't get with money. And the players and coaches get their money every month. I don't get it. You understand? 
And some of these coaches, I said, no, referee don't forget to you. And them are these, them are out the game. Referee don't teep out the game. It's just poor decision because referees are being overworked. We don't have enough referees to service the league. And sometimes when the top referees go overseas to officiate, we're left with the other referees, which is bad for the system because we don't have enough in the first place. But they mm. don't see it like that. Mm. They don't see it like that. Okay. So, so when you're a FIFA referee, you out almost every month going overseas to ref in a game. And yeah. what that, which part is it international tournament or football? Like what what you guys go overseas go ref? So it's 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 different. Different, different stuff. So for example, they may have a symposium, like a three day symposium. They need all uh, the tier two referees. So they they have them in tier. So you have like tier one, which are the World Cup referees. You have tier two, you have tier three. Tier three are the new ones, maybe just gone on the list four months, five months, six months. So symposium may, may take place in Guatemala. They take it to the symposium, go through the laws of the game, go through some new concepts, stuff like that. And you may have CFU games. So like the thing where um, Cavalier just complete the other day, yeah. with, uh, Robin Hood and stuff, those yeah. are CFU CONCACAF games. When Cincinnati came here to play against um, Cavalier, that's CONCACAF Champions League. And then you may have under 17, you may have under 20, you may have World Cup qualifier, you may have under 23 Olympic qualifier. So different, different games referees play out for. You may have a friendly. You go to a USA, go to a USA versus Switzerland. 1100 US dollar. You understand? Mm. Just like that. Three days, then you come back home. Mm. So, okay, so we got you. So, you cannot go to a harder person country to ref them leave. No, unless you get invited. Unless you get invited. So, almost a referee, almost a Jamaica referee ref MLS final. MLS final? Yeah. Nah, man. I'm sure. Only, only one way that can happen. One way that can happen. He can either get invited, which I doubt. Or he's a Jamaican who has his citizenship or green card. No other way. Yeah, man. Either, either, so either. For, 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 for you to ref the MLS, you have to have a citizenship or green card. Mm. I'm, a, I'm a probably a mix it up then. I'm a probably a mix it up. But I'm sure no. Maybe, maybe you saw him refing a game because there was a boycott one time where all the MLS referees strike and they had to send. Outside of the US to get referees to come, or uh, probably either one of them Kanka Cup tournament, either Gold Cup. I think one Jamaican referee, it was yeah, our man, Gold Cup, yeah, Gold Cup. Cody Campbell did the Gold Cup final, yeah, Cody man. Campbell did a Gold Cup final. What about the Gold Cup where they say all uh, everybody's from Jamaica refereeing this game, yeah, man? Gold Cup that was a Gold Cup final, Gold Cup. I wish you, um, it was Courtney Campbell, Courtney Campbell. Anthony Garwood and uh, Jesus, Morgan. Morgan from St. Thomas. I remember Morgan first. Yeah, man, I think it's a. I mean, no, I mean, yeah, where it's they, final. they did excellent. Yeah, they, man, they, 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 they was I don't remember there. what year it was, to be honest. Yeah. Maybe 2012. Yeah. Some year. But if I type in World Cup, World Cup final. Courtney Campbell will come up. I think it was I think it was USA Mexico, you know. It was a Gold Cup final. Ricardo yeah, Morgan. Man. So it's Courtney Campbell, Courtney Campbell, Ricardo Morgan, and Anthony Gawood. Mm. Yeah. yeah so three of them came from Jamaica. Yeah, it was excellent, man. Yeah, man. It was an excellent final. I watched it. Yeah. It was 2012, somewhere around it. Yeah, come sure no way they they mean not a migrant, they, they must say it's yeah. all cancer. Yeah, so. So that means we get with flowers in there because I was listening to I was speaking to somebody doing this interview. Said Jamaica have some of the best referee in Kankaka. Yep, yep. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And and a lot of it has to do with um exposure. So even though they have Jamaica as a bush league, right? We don't get our recognition because they are saying we don't have quality football playing our league, but still yet we get referees to be exposed 
So like a like a nation in God every week, like a um a parchment, you get me? Like a Stefan Duarte. They go out and they officiate these tough games, these Cruz Azul, these um MLS games, you know, these teams from Honduras. Mm. Okay, okay. So we we'll, we'll, we'll get with flow out. We'll get with flow yeah, then uh, as a referee. Definitely. Definitely. All right. So you, you say you know um 30 different country, right? We we'll get we we'll get past that. Overall, which game would you say the biggest game that you ref? Locally or overseas? Overall. Overall. Wow. 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 Um, I, I would put it locally. You know. In biggest in terms of crowd would be overseas. In terms mm -hmm. of crowd. But the biggest of my career is the Arnett Humble Lion semi final at the jungle. Biggest game. And because that game. I decided to use man management. So if you should go back and watch the game, Arnett was leading, I think, 2-0. 2-0, you know, and it was leading 2-0. And Humble Lion got a free kick, ball crossed in the box, came over, boom, score. So he made 2-1. But guess what happened? A lapse in concentration. So after a goal is scored, you know, the referee would normally take out the card and write down the number, write down the time. But what I did wrong, I took my eye off the ball. So when a goal is scored, you see the team will score, the goal is not their ball to take up and run the spot. A lot of people don't know that. So what the referee should have done is intervene right there. Either I run to where the ball is and ask for it, or tell the humble line player who just scored and leave the ball. So a big argument ensued because guess what? Humble line won the ball to go, to go spot, so he get more time. And bigger Thompson want him to leave the ball on the goal. So him take him own time go spot it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I took my eye off of that. And that caused a big thing. Man tear off. Man jersey. And me daddy I try to squash it. And man basket out of my hand. And me decide say, yo. He said, tonight, I'm going to make a win tonight. You know? A football I'm going to be the winner at the end tonight. Me now I'm going to red carry the two on it. See? Yeah. I want to play some football. I'm saying, look around. You see the amount of people in the stand? Me not have to start the show tonight. I'm going to make I'm going to win. I'm going to play some football. I'm going to want no more of this one. And then squash it right there. And for the other 34 minutes, there was not a single card in the game, brother. It all come from Oral Tracy show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Come from Oral Tracy show, brother. And I'm get big recommendation for that. Not another card. Mm -hmm. Because I could have shown two red cards right there and then. But we decided, we know what happened. We know the heat at the moment. And we know what caused it. Mm -hmm. So we just squash it right there. And the game continued and finished 2-1. Finish mm -hmm. That was the biggest game, I would say, of my career. The Arnett Garden versus them time, they more humble and a kick like fire, you know. Yeah, man. A crowd has both, man. Anyway, they put it around. Yeah. But, but they don't yeah, like fire, like... like the Wolf brother, them were, were yeah, man, yeah, the Wolf brothers, man. Big, big yeah. thing. So, 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 it, it is important depend on the referee decision. Now, may I put it to the task now? The game against Canada with them, I agree, get two yellow cards mm -hmm. and a red card. What do you think about that decision by the referee? All right, so. First and foremost, the, the referee is in charge of every game. The referee decision is final. All right? Mm -hmm. Demar Gray is a professional. What he did was unacceptable. All right? This referee is top, top referee. I'm not asking. He's top, top referee. He's been to two World Cup already. So what mm -hmm. happened is he thought he got fouled or he get fouled, whichever way. He thought he get fouled, he get fouled. Remember, the referee have the whistling. So he was. Outside of play. The one in roll on to the feed at all, or the one where the, the um the, the one where you get on the stretcher. It was two of them, you know. Yeah. The one when the one and the, no when them are agree were calling the calling the, 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 the photo of um the, the doctors to come on and the referee right. said no. No, you can't get up and walk up. You can't get up and walk up. No, get up right. and walk injured. Right. So 
What happened now? The church, the church I come off. The referee say, yo. Come on, the field, yeah. Come, the, the church I come on. You need to go up on the church. Them are going to say, no, go up. Right. So it, the, the referee, what the referee did, only the church I come on. All right, good. So, so if the referee assess the person, right? Say, so assess the person. I say, you need stretcher. For more than one reason, you know. You need stretcher, less time. You need stretcher, I am in charge of the game. If you decide you're not going on the stretcher, it is a mandatory yellow card. Now, the referee can do one of two things. He can not show the yellow card and play more time. Or he can be, be this big boss for the field and show the yellow card. So, one of two things. If you can walk off, I allow you to walk off. Walk off, man. If you walk off one minute, I play about three minutes. It's simple. But what the referee, what I am thinking that the referee was thinking on the night is that the Mario Greer wasn't seriously injured. So he asked the stretcher to take him off to see if time, but treat him at the touchline. When I'm ready, I'll call you back. Right? I'm not there, but that, that is my thinking. Mm -hmm. All right? So if he chose to not take the stretcher and walk off, fine. You can either caution him because you are thinking he's feigning injury. Now, if he's seriously injured and you tell him to go on the stretcher, if him walk off, he's not seriously injured because the referees are mandated. You know, once they see them do like this with them hand, they signal to the fourth official and say like this, I stretch at them one. You know, no doctor come on. They don't want a medic command because they are trained. They are told. Worse, your team is up. Three minutes left, four minutes left is all about time wasting. But people say time wasting is actually delaying the restart of play. So the referee was correct. Now, if you go on the field without the referee's permission, on or off, so you go on the field without permission, or you leave the field without permission, is a mandatory yellow card. So what if the linesman send you on? Is it the linesman can send you on? Yes, man. But as, as I was saying earlier in the interview, we have what is called pre-match instruction. So I would tell my AR or my photo official, don't send out nobody behind me. So in other words, my back is turned and I'm going to feel, don't send out nobody behind me. I don't know what I want. <laughs> if I'm watching the play, you can always send him out. You understand? And we have radio. You can talk. All right, Tyrell, I'm sending out number 12. All right, Tyrell, I'm sending out Gray. I'm sending out Leon. I'm sending him out. So you, you know if the ball got to him, you already sent him out. And then again, you don't send on a play an active play. That's a no no. You mm -hmm. don't active play when you come and come touch the ball. You come and come, come black at the uh, opponent. You come and come interfere with play. So you never ever send on a player in active play. So he did three things that was incorrect. They were great, that is. So that's why I'm deserve the red card. That's why I'm deserve the red card. And if a player who played in the highest league, him know better. He was yeah. just testing the referee, but him know better. <laughs> All right. This is a referee who, who who gave Cristiano Ronaldo a yellow card for clapping him. Big referee, man. I did tournaments with him. Big referee. Yeah. So what about the one? The man named against USA, bro. Because me don't know, brother. I think USA always I get with something against Jamaica. You know? All right. So so this one now, as I was playing in, into another group, there, there's a dispensation. All right. So if I put up three minutes one two three minutes of added time right mm -hmm. when 92 plus 40 seconds gone you decide to make a substitution and the player take all him own time tell all the granny high tell all the dog bite and take three minutes and walk out i am allowed to add back those three minutes right yeah but you never spend three minutes in the, 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 no, the, i'm saying just example me again just example me again mm. right so so those time that was added all right? One, it was because of a time adjustment. So if we put up three minutes, and after one, we realize, no, a five, me have a play. The fourth official don't have to readjust the board. I would have the time because the three minutes is minimum, you know. I can play six, I can play seven. The three is just minimum. Mm -hmm. But what person saw the adjustment, the adjustment, it was just inexperience on the fourth official part, and I heard it was a manual it was a party board. That's what I heard. It was mm -hmm. a party board. Yeah, but because but, you know, them put up four minutes and then the minute play, one minute play right. out, one minute play out. And the a five goal. And the man them put up five. Five, right. So I heard it was one of two things. It was a party board, but
But I'm saying the referee knew how much time mother had. He knew from that substitution in at the time he was gonna play five minutes. Right? So would not blame the referee, none at all. It was just a lapse in concentration. From mm. a coach's perspective, to me, it was a lapse in concentration. Trust me. Oh. So even the referee, even if the referee put up three minutes and play seven minutes, you cannot blame the referee. Why? Because it's a referee time. He must would have seen something to play that poor extra minute there or whatever time. I, so, I, have, I have done matches already where me tell the foot official five minutes. You know the foot official do put up three. I don't know from where I am, him say five, when me put, tell him three, <laughs> vice versa. You understand? So me yeah. have a play. Every time the ball go, me tell him my watch. Me show them my watch, my watch, my watch. So everybody in the stadium know a terrible time me a play. You get mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. What yeah. but, but that? I mean, I know about that. Yeah, but we can't blame time for the last thing. You can't blame time. We can't be play until the last week. The man, the man playing up several minutes better. Yeah, because every referee time. No, man. Yeah, man. The referee time. Man, the referee may get a beaten for it, you know. The referee may get beaten for it. They may have to learn and adjust from it. But as a team, as players, as coaches and managers, you have to play to the final whistle. That's why we call it the beautiful game. Final whistle. And US has this thing. Them never say die, brother. I mean, learn that. US never say die. Any sport they play. They play to the end. <laughs> it's a tough one to know because I'm there, I'm crying, brother. I'm there, I'm crying, I'm here, 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 I'm and he's a, he's a heart of a warrior, he's a lion. And I know him would deliberately score on Jamaica like that. I know that. It's just mm-hmm. football. Just football. I uh, mean, I like the referee, them, that time management, the killer, brother. I mean, I know, bro. I still can't get yeah. over that, brother. Yeah, but me would blame the referee for time. But I tell people a lot of times, um, I don't know, but me see the game from three different angles. So, like you know, we can understand. Like Hal Grimson, we can understand. But me see the game from a referee perspective, from a coach, and from a teacher. So me see it from three different angles. Mm. Mm. So you watch the national team. What do you think about the national team? Yeah, man. I, I think I think it's the best we look for maybe going to the Gold Cup final. But here we go to the Gold Cup final with Tapa. Yeah. And then Taxi score. Yeah, I think separate from from that is the best we have looked now. Me like the philosophy, me like the transition, me like me like me like me like where um, the coach is trying. You can see he's trying to impart his philosophy on the team. You know, the shifting, the moving across, and you no know, one man now try to take on play and beat play, and you know, me see them play as a team now. So that means uh, that means uh, we we'll have a look good going forward then. And, and and with the persons that are missing. And you see when low it's a position when lower play, yeah. we like the position. We don't think yeah. we need him in a defense. You don't think yeah. because the man have a problem in playing this, you know, but I kinda always worry about lower and getting picking up early yellow card in the game. You know? Yeah, but 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 if he, if he's playing there with another hole in midfielder and he gets specific instruction, uh, it, it's you thing with lower to me. He's been a lot of tackling, which he don't need to tackle. Look at look 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 at a lot of the, 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 the better midfielders in the world and the best defenders. Tackling is the last resort, you know. Mm-hmm. If you should look around, tackling is the last resort. So mm-hmm. if you're reading the game well and you're marking well and you're tracking well, you don't do a lot of tackles. But that is him. Lead from him tackling, get but that is him strength. Always a tackle. Yeah, but you don't need to. Mm-hmm. If you read the game a lot. And watch international football. Him do a lot. Of make a lot of huh? Van Dijk and make a lot of attack. Exactly my point. You may have somebody in front of him who do that work there, but in reading and tracking, I know when to go cross. Van Dijk do a lot of interception, a lot of interception. But yeah. they do a lot of tackles. Yeah. So as a referee, how do you judge him? Do a referee a game against Van Dijk because he's not going to he's make. Not um, a player like him, 
you would you would what should I say? You 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 would have given some leeway because you know you, you know he's not a nasty tackle. You have some defenders when they tackle Hana come. Yeah. You understand? So when I say a lot of leeway, maybe some 50 50 tackle him about get them. You get what I say? Yeah. Yeah. But you have some defenders you have to get close to them. Mm. I mean so our future look bright then. So Yeah man. Definitely. Nana all Nana need for do is just read the game a little bit more. Read the game a little bit more. And a lot of those tackles that he's making, he don't have to make it. Now tell him. You have what is called video analysis, you know. And it's Simon Preston. I taught Simon at Hillel Academy. He's doing a great job. A mm. great job with the team. Mm. Yeah, man. And, and you and I have some discussions. About video analyzing the team and stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Just big up, big up, big up Simon. Up. Very good on that. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so going forward now for you. So, what next for you as a referee? Well, I am, I am still helping out where I can in Kasafa. As I said, my thing is to develop the, the new referees that we have and to strengthen the body that we have in Kasafa. That's Kingston and Saint Andrew. Um, I must say this proudly. From the, the, the concluded season that we had, the under 14, under 16, Money Cup, D Cup, you name it. There's no confederate parish in Jamaica that exposed more than 20 referees. And we have been to all finals except one. So, in other words, Kasafa referees have been an under 16 final, under 14 final, um, um, Champions Cup, Dakasta Cup. All the finals except Manico. All. And why is that? Because Kingston referees don't normally do Manico. So they will send the town referees to country and the country referees to come and do Manico. You understand? So yeah. which means we are doing something good in Kasafa. We are exposing mm. a lot of referees. We have one of the top referees right now, Stefan Duar. We have Damian Williams. We have a lot of upcoming referees in Kasafa. So my job is to, to, to continue the trust with them in Kasafa and to, to, to help them reach the next level. And I, I will join the Premier League panel um, in terms of instructors and assessors um, coming the new season. I already spoke to Cardinal Samuel, she the head of preparing in Jamaica. So I will go over to that side and help them to, you know, maybe a fitness trainer, wherever they need my expertise. But as it pertains to referee, I will always, you know, assist where I, I can. Mm. And uh, who you think who you think right now think in Jamaica where Jamaica one of them referee that don't get the lucky in way that say is a very good referee. Um as in still refereeing right now but don't get the lucky in? Yeah. Yeah. Uh you have so many, you have so many, but but you see what the system requires, they have to know what that is and work towards it. So in other words, if you are at the Premier League level for seven, eight, nine, ten years, and you're not getting a one look in to go overseas and do a tournament, and they're not looking at you to be FIFA. It's something wrong with you. You have to change what you're doing. You have to try work harder in training. You have to try ace your games. You have to look the part. You know, you can't go out a match and you just white out shots, this 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 robot shots, this this tear up, tear up. Um, sneakers, you have to look like a professional referee. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So, if you're doing that consistently, you have something that works for you. Change up what you do, man. Change up what you do. Look at the referees before you, what they, they did to get to that level. But mm. you have you have several referees. Remember, I'm not at the Premier League panel knowing, but I have seen them week in, week out. And I said, Why have you reached here? Why have you reached here? But if they must be looking at for themselves and know what they are do wrong. Mm. And I am on the outside, I can't tell. Why why referee why some referee love to be a center of everything? Uh, that that is that is a great question. That is a great question. One is they they don't separate themselves from the game. So mm -hmm. in other words, they want to be the taskmaster. No. Referees are facilitators of the game. And we say it all the time. You only need it out there to blow the whistle. They can't get another referee with a different personality. But yeah, some referees want to be the center of attraction all the time. 
I was mm-hmm. never ever that referee. And we can't tell you, those referees, they have, they have, they get less respect from everybody. You know, some referees just want to be the center of attraction. It's not about you. Not about you. It's about the game. Service the game. That is my mantra. Service the game. If I mean, if you go for the fence and ref the game, I will do it. Mm. Yeah, man. So back to two things. For to be a good referee, position. Well, and you can't give me a minute, the bachelor. You no, know, I'm plugging it in before. Let's take a yeah. Go ahead. Keep it. At the meantime, hit the like button. Stop what you're doing and hit the like button. Travis Pesso, hit the like button, Travis. Good to see you, Travis, when the good news is here. Um, big up to all of the people who is here. Today is what, Friday? But today is feel like Saturday. I don't know why me. Why me I get back the, I get the feedback there? Yeah. I don't know why. Come on, people. Hit the like button. Hit the like button, people. Big up yourself, brother. You're there, and I don't you have nothing in it. Yes. Yes. Big up yourself, Moses. No respect for your donation, bro. Respect it. Respect. Respect. Come, people. Hit the like button, man. Yeah, Ryan. Sorry about that. I'm back here. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Yeah. So yes. what what I um so the question of me have fear me have fear seen. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. So the question me have fear. How do you manage the game? Like the tempo of the game. How do you manage the game? Like when a boy stone and a like a anita and a tiwali a play where Pacos, how do you manage the game where you're in control of the game? All right, so so first thing first, so you have you have games that are more important than some. All right, so uh, and why I said that? Say for example, and it is already qualified for top two. Boys told the a fifth and they were getting to see the, them. They are fifth. And they want to get into four, top four. All right? So you have games that are important than some. More games are, are more important than some. First, you have to know that. You have to know the point standings. You have to know what is the interest of this game. All right? Have, having said that, when, when, when the game starts, you have to know the flow of the game. Is it a fast-paced game? Is it and it's a play sit back and the mega counter? Is it, a, is it a game where the first five minute tackles are flying all over the place? So, for example, if you give a player fast pace, but no nasty tackle, I'll allow it. If tackles are fly all over the place, I stop it every single moment. You have some games you can allow continuity. You can allow continuity. Yes, tackles are play, but you can allow continuity because there's no malice in the game. There's no nasty play. But if it's a game where tackles are fly all over, I will stop it every minute. You know why I stop it? To kill the momentum of the game. To get it on the level that you want it. But if a referee is at, say, say here, and the game gone up here, you lose control. It should be the other way around. So if the game is here, and the referee is on top of the game, fine. But once the game rises, and you don't rise past the game, you're going to lose control. I don't know if that answer your question. Okay, okay. I don't see one because I know some referee just a dash you like you yeah, show them. No, see no, no, no. You. And, and man management, you see, man management and game control is very, very important. You you have some games, you know, where tempers are fly all about. You see, if you kill the game, just stop the game, 
Kova, have a little talk with the photo official, drink some water and come back. That minute there, the 30 seconds there, kill a whole heap out of the game. That a person don't know. Kill a whole heap of steam out of the game. They get a message, there's a free kick. Hey, no, hey, not right there. They want to take it fast. No, hey, not right there. Right here you are. There. And you kill the momentum the right away. Get some steam out of the game. But you have some games that are fast paced, not nasty, any day. I allow those. Mm. And so, I, call, I was never ever a card referee. Never ever a card referee. Yeah. You have some referee use card to calm down the game. Well, well, I don't know if it calmed down the game. It kind of sent a message because I have seen games where the first five, five minutes, three yellow card, two red. And that game mash up. And I've seen games where no card no drop until the 88th minute. Five red cards. <laughs> so the cards to me send a message, but to, I, I don't know if it actually calmed down the game. Because if if the, the worst thing you want is two teams where don't put passes together, who come out to fight today and make your, your life a, a living hell. That's the worst <laughs> thing you want. Trust me. I've had one of those games in my early <laughs> years. <laughs> Living hell, brother. <laughs> well, let me go with me. I want to, if we continue to do this, I will pick it up. <laughs> like 11 yellow card and two red. Yeah. And I want to check it out. It's two neighboring teams. Two garrison teams. One a labor right, one a PNP. And you know where that come from? Yeah. You know, shut up the team and shut up the team. And after a while, you get the understand where that come from. But it's not just football. You know, you know what you know what a person said to me one day at a presentation, Kasafa? He yeah. said, referee, you have a very important role. You see, a lot of these inner city youths who play for teams, they don't have no father. They only have the Dan who can put them in line. So you see, when they come play on a team and play football, you see, you the referee, you are the Dan for them that day. And they look into it. And they told me that 12 years ago. And it's true. A lot of them now no father figure they don't no body over them. But when they come from the field and you blow the whistle, they might be hear the referee, right? Yeah. Yes. And it's a lie that we told me that at that presentation. And it's true. Mm. It is true. So how do you deal with players? Get up in their face. Like we got always up in referee. Yeah, but oh. as I say, respect. It is it, it, respect. So a player like like bigger now, you know, just come up in your face with no reason at all. All right? And he mm. knows the referees. They will test the referees. So the first time he come up, hey, no more. One more, I'm sending you a fight for you. You understand? But if mm. you are alone, if you come up in the face, come up in the face, come up in the face, it's gonna tear away your game. Mm. But from the first time he come and you put that palm out and tell him, him now go do it again. Mm. But he, he he knows he have referees going to test them right through the game. <laughs> He's like that. But you have some mm. referee him don't do that too because he know the referees. Yeah, they will... say respect from day one. Yeah, they have a lot of respect for me. Yeah, but I'm mean, gonna you know only do it, Virgin, because trust me, that is a hell of a job for dealing. Yeah, man, it's, it's hard. It's Especially hard. when them top team that play on it and boy stone and yeah. difficult. It's hard. Yeah, but like, is that when players come up in in in? You ever have no other referee where players come up in their face and they get scared? Um, I, I wouldn't use the word as scared, but they get intimidated. Mm. Get intimidated. And I can tell you, from my being a referee, I have I have never been threatened to the point where I never done with it. And I've never ever felt safe than than refing in a inner city. Never ever. All the inner city them you need them. My mm. safest point is refing there. The Waterhouse, the Tivoli, the Arnett, the Humble Lion, you name it. Mm. So other referees, they may go there and feel threatened. You know? My first line, you know, my first running a line, a man step up to me and lift up his shirt and say, referee, you say this, and I ramp to them. My first, first, the 2006 running a line in a inner city. But me do my job. And when the end of the game, the so referee, you know, watch no face, man. We are trying to intimidate you. <laughs> watch no face. Yeah, because me, me tell myself, any day me feel threatened, me call, I go, I go, I go, I go to work. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. now I'm going to be correct. It's going to be judgmental call. 
So I feel threatened. I'm going to just give up refereeing. Mm. But I've never, ever feel threatened to the point where it's going to mess up the game. I'm going to shake it. I'm going to make a run card. No. I've never, ever been that referee. Never. Mm. But you have other referees maybe come from our country and then feel intimidated. Mm. You know? Yeah. yeah because we can't tell them nothing. Them now they are nothing there. Nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm the same referee, what's your name again? Um, the, the FIFA referee girl. On it, on it, on it, on it. Like, I wonder how she deal with refing the man because some why them get a referee at these big games for I wonder how yeah. she deal with these things. Right. You know, remember, 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 remember when I told it earlier about how you make FIFA how you get to the next level? Yeah. So this is a part of it. So because Jamaican female referees are so good. They, they all shine all the females in Caribbean and, and to a lesser extent, CONCACAF. They are giving them the male games, the male Premier League games. And once they can master these games, then they throw them out into CONCACAF. So that is why you're seeing a female now doing the Jamaica game, during the third and fourth. When Jamaica played um, the Champions League at, in Kingston, it was a set of female referees. Mm. You know, some of them may kind of, some of them kind of keep up with, with running on the line, but in terms of making the cars and stuff, they they're not bad, mm. they're not bad. But I, I for one don't really have a problem with female refing male game. But, but when you do that, you take away a male who has the, the capacity and the capability to do the job. So in other mm. words, Tyrell is a female. Tyrell is a male referee, right? Me supposed to do male games and stuff. When a female come and ref in a Jamaica Premier League, you're taking away Tyrell's job who can't go do female games. Because doing female games is a step down. Mm. If you get to me, I try to say. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, because... But this no, is a way yeah, of building yeah. them, the female, to get higher. But it's mm. how they do it. Yeah, but not... In in a Jamaica, I could see why they do that because not many females game in Jamaica for them. Exactly, and our level is low. Our level of female football is low. Mm. Yeah, so I I don't have a problem with it. But yeah. when it gets to Concacaf now and to the World Cup, when you see a female a ref in a male World Cup, you're taking away a male job. That's my point. In them. That's the only thing. Mm. And you can't tell me say she better than all the male. Referee who they are welcome. But what if she do really better? How? 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 No. You see the fever? You see the girl? Eh? Man, love her, bro. Yeah, man. She... But the best, the best, the best female referee in the world. Listen to me now. The best female referee in the world. I think she comes from, I think Germany, if I'm not mistaken. She did champion the game. She is not better than the worst male referee at the World Cup. Wrong or right? Is she better than the worst male referee? Probably. Now ask me your honest opinion. Wrong or right? Probably. Uh, if, if, if she's better, fine. If she's better, fine. I stand corrected. But yeah. if she's not better than the worst male, remember say the male referees who got the male World Cup, you know, they are the best all over the world. You know, remember that. So if she's better than the worst male referee, all well and done. Give her the job. But if she's not, and they just want her to expose her and to look at her in a male World Cup, you can do that somewhere else. That's just my point. That's just my take. So the last female ref to Jamaica, I think the Jamaica Panama, she was good, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Excellent. Nine out of ten. Nine yeah. out of ten. But did you okay. see the airs? Did you see the airs? The what? Ayers, assistant referee, the linesman. Did you see them? Linesman. No. A lot of them can't keep up. A lot of them could not keep up with the pace. That's my point right there. So, so what are you saying? The, the, or the pace of the game. Right. They can't keep up with the pace because males running at 90, at 80, at 60 miles per hour, they cannot keep up with them. They can't. So they make oh, so outside call and stuff like that. They can't. They that, depend on the... So that is the issue you have. That is the issue. That's the issue I have. That's the issue I have. Mm. Once they can keep up on there better than the ARs, the male ARs, fine. 
Mm. And no problem with that. I'm all sorry. But don't because, take it away and say you just want to look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, probably they want to give them that, that, that look of space, Bridget. That push, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's happened sometimes. Yeah, man, definitely. Well, you see the girl named Odette? Mm hmm And my referee that. Yeah, man, she's going to the next World Cup, you know, without a doubt. She's going to the next female World Cup. Yeah, she haven't, she haven't been to any big tournament as yet? Yeah, man, yeah, man. A lot. She have, a, she have an interview on my channel. Yeah, man. Yeah, share it to yeah. me, man. Yeah, man. Share it to me, man. Share it to me, man. She's been to two World Cups already. I think she's been to under 20 and under 17. Yeah. Yeah. She's really good, man. Really good, man. And young, too. Young, man. Fit. Yeah. That is good. But tell him about Ref Corner because that's my place to watch Ref because I, I love to learn, you know. You know what I mean? I, um, Next thing more, I ask you, the referee with them. You think in the future we will see referee give an interview? Because I think referee should give interview after game. Because yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes coach lose them job because they made a mistake. Players lose them job, no renew contract. But referee, sometimes they make some decision you want to know how they make their decision. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I, I agree. Uh, as it relates to post match interview, I don't think that will change anytime soon because sometimes you, you will jeopardize your stance as well as you mentioned the coaches, the managers, the owners of clubs. But that is one of the reasons why I started my channel, Ref Corner, to highlight some of these things. You know, a lot of persons, they don't know the laws of the game. They mm. don't know why referees make certain mistakes. They, they, they don't know referees can talk. A lot of them, they have never heard referees open their mouth until they visit my channel. Referee, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a um, interview there with Nation. I think mm. Nation has more than 500 and something views. Mm. You know? Yeah. If you could listen when Nation said, Nation said, people join refereeing. Refereeing, no, you can make a living out of it. A living. I'm saying about dream of going to so many countries. Mm. Nation. Yeah, man, but, but in terms of referees giving interviews, I have no problem with it. You know, it's just that sometimes you may just finish a game, you know, you're a mistake because the team lose and they go ask you about it. You know, you go throw yourself under the bus and then they the sideline you for like a month or two. When truth and in fact was a genuine mistake and the federation already have it in their plans to, you know, give you some remedial work. So you go give that interview there right now. It just add more fire, add more fuel to it. But mm. in terms of talking generally about refereeing and stuff, I have no problem. And they shouldn't have any problem either. But mm. back in the days in Iran, nobody used to talk to the media. Nobody. It just, it just, it's a far bit rule that we don't talk. What is wrong with talking to the media? I don't see the problem. Mm. Well, just like the referee, uh, what's his name? Come from Sky Sports and say a decision was made. We didn't want to put him in body in a bad spot, so he never called him over to the stream. <laughs> That's the EPL, English Premier League referee. English Premier League, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was yeah. a penalty. Right now, it it, it right. is a penalty, and the referee just say he now call him friend to put him in another uncomfortable spot. Right. Exactly. It happened, it happened. And a lot of times they're in the bar room and they mess up, mess up big time. Tell Why do they make so much mistake and the technology is there for help them? Incompetence, bro. I said all the time, it's incompetence. As we said to you earlier, if you get the three best and switch places, you will see a lot of mistakes here making Jamaica. And so why the, English, why, the English, why the English FA wouldn't take other people to come and ref some of these games? Uh, no, they want their own. They want their own. Just like everywhere else in the world. MLS referees do MLS. Jamaica referees do Jamaica. Maybe when they reach the semi-final and final, they get that outside person not to show bias. But that's how it is all over the world. Mm. One, you want to develop your league with your referees. But it's just incompetence. They have the tools, they have the persons, but it's just incompetence. 
is no other way to put it. So what do you think about VR? VAR VAR is good. VAR is good. It's, it's the use of the technology. You know, they they don't I watch all leagues all over the world. And I can tell you without a doubt, the EPL rest they get they get the worst end of the stick all the time. That's just me. They get if you watch if you watch La Liga, if you watch Bundesliga, if you watch um Saudi Arabia, when they use the, the VAR, they make less mistakes than the EPL refs. Because the EPL refs are just incompetent. You see them drawing one line and I wonder who draw the line. <laughs> you understand? The toe, the sleeve, the knee. I, I don't understand. I really don't understand who in the room. It's, it's sad, uh, man. It's sad, it's sad. We've never put... best league, but the mm. referees are not the best. Mm. So, so you don't see that, and they not look like they're not willing to take outside help for help it, to make it better. No, they're not. I can't tell you why. No, why? Because they're anti FIFA. Anti FIFA meaning the the English FA or the FA. They were established long, long time. FIFA was established 1904. I think the English FA was established 18 18 something. I don't remember. All right. So they have their own instructors, their own manuals, their own everything. The FIFA go around to every MA. MA is member association. So they will send reputable persons to go around to teach their referees and stuff like that. Other than the, the FIFA referees who go to tournaments in England, none of the other referees there can pass a fitness test in Jamaica. None of them. I mean, I'm asking them. In England? Yes. Other than the, the Michael Oliver and the referees who used to do FIFA tournaments in England, none of the other referees can pass a fitness test. I mean, I ask you. Just look yeah, at how they run. Because sometimes they, they do what is called, they do what is called, with the 20 meter run, got up and down, what that name again? Beep test. They do a beep test before their season. Right? They don't do the, 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 the 12 lap around the track. They don't do the 60 meter sprint. Stuff like that, you can go on the website and check it out. Mm. I tell you. So that is why you don't see a lot of movement in their games. They depend on technology. They run straight down the middle and they react. I, mean, I was telling you about reading the game and be proactive and go ahead and play. They don't do that. When the ball is going up here, you see them run it down. While Jamaica referees, we are trained. They say a tiki taka move or the next and pass. Sometimes you see, them the the some day you see the Jamaica referee. Them right. before right. them, and they might watch for the young guys. I mean, the right. okay. referee do them thing there. Why exactly. them? Kid? That's my point, bro. That's and them, are, when you reach on the point, them, are, them are, yeah. see around there, I look if you right. want okay. Oh, that is my point. That is my point because we do certain drills to get the angler to be in position. England don't use the position, they use technology, <laughs> technology all the time. <laughs> wow. So that's why they mean so much hot water every weekend. Exactly. Exactly. And you have to mm. take five minutes to look for 20 minutes to make a decision. I don't get it. <laughs> a one look we have when we are in the Premier League. One look. And you better get it right. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo. Yeah. It's no. not hard, but if you train and do these drills, you will get it right. So why so why them they make FIFA people them come in at the thing, Bridget? Uh, help because them. I'm saying they're anti FIFA. That's what I'm saying. They're anti FIFA. They're not for FIFA. Oh, so they don't want nobody addicted to them. Exactly. Exactly. That's me, going, me and your father, me born before you, you're not supposed to tell me what to do. <laughs> that's that's, the that's the one of the main things them take away themselves from the 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 way them. So so but you realize not much of them FIFA them have FIFA referee over England. Not much of them got world tournament. <laughs> there goes my point. All right, look. When you watch the Premier League again, look where the badge is. Look where the FIFA badge. I don't know if you notice it. Mm. Look where every other country, the FIFA badge is on the left. Look where England. England is a white FA on the left and the FIFA badge is on the right. You know why they wear it like that? The FA is close to their heart. The FIFA is to their right. They can go to hell. Just look. Look at any country in the world. When they watch it again, look at a FIFA referee. Look to see where he badges and look to see where the FA badges. And look and tell mm. No other country in the world. Just look. So like they must send a message. 
<laughs> and it has been long. As we said, they, 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 they were established long before FIFA. So they must yeah. see why FIFA could come in and tell them how they be train them referee. But if you look for certain videos, or if you get this right and get this wrong, this is how we have been with it over the years. That is it. That's the bottom I, line. And that's the biggest issue they have in England, you know. Uh, no, no, you yeah, explain certain things. No, me series why the England referee them no good. Right. Just, just look about. Just look. The so many things they may tell you tonight. Just look after. Look at watching games after. Yeah. Especially reading the game and running the game and following the game. Just watch. Just watch. No man. Then they 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 come Jamaica, man. Just look. Mm. When when I watch games, you know, another man is my team. When I watch games, I watch the referees. Every game I watch all over the world, I watch the referees. See them operate. If I go to Red Bull Stadium or Cowboy Stadium, when I go to watch a match, I look to see how the referees operate. The game is secondary. Because mm. I want to see some things. Oh. You really watch referee them still. Yeah. Yeah, because you go as a football fan. <laughs> But yeah. the football referee are my team, you know. So you know, say I say everything seen. great tonight. Yeah, I say every I just make one mistake and it's like you want to miss it the whole interview. You know, you know. what up, what up? <laughs> Manu <laughs> Manu for life, brother, at 93. <laughs> Forget the partner, man. Forget the partner. <laughs> Yo, being for the man that is so great until he mentioned Manchester Forget United. The partner, man. Man, you feel like Jaja. Let's cut out the fact that you know your credibility and the line referee. Man, I like yeah, brother. Right, this song. I can't believe I support United, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But ref corner people, yeah, more to support me. Share ref corner to my YouTube channel already, you know, because trust me, when we go over there. We learn something new about the game, people. I'm going to plug Ref Corner. Yeah, man. Thank you Link so down in the comment section, people. I'm going to go over there go show him some love and show him some support. You get the message? But, boy, I mean, no, brother. What you tell me about, him, about the United? I just feel like, what you tell me about the England referee, them. I just get eight them and them more, brother. <laughs> now, a fox, man. Just, just, just look in what I'm show you. Just a fox. Yeah, just, man. Just, just them. Look at how them ref and look and see afterward if what you else makes sense. Yeah, in England, man, them cover up for them each other, brother. At no point in time, brother. And poor, man. Poor, poor, poor. Poor. Yeah. Me say, me say Liverpool. Who Liverpool was playing? And Liverpool was playing? Top now. Somebody, when man, Arsenal, when the man go down and use him hand and box the ball, brother. Penalty. Remember that game there? Eh? Yeah, we well, forgot 2 1. How can you? I mean, I understand. It was clear, and I said, man, drop on the ball. It was clear the hand movement to the ball. Clear. They're just not good. I mean, I tell you, they're just not good. Bridget, remember when Odegaard got down and sell up on the ball and the man's stretching? Yeah, man. Yeah, brother, Odegaard. Clear as day. They're just not good, man. Yeah. It's me at it. You know, somebody make a point that say you even the Jamaica referee them better. Yeah. yeah than England yeah, referee. Man. Not and all it, of them, you know. As you said, take the top three or four and switch places with them. You now give them no communication. And you see the amount of problem with them. I tell you. Chalk yeah. cheat. So so who are the three top referee in your opinion in England? Uh Michael Oliver is one. Uh I, I really don't remember the other two names. I know them fierce, but I don't remember the other two names, to be honest. But there, there are three FIFA referees. Two went to the World Cup. So Michael Oliver and the other one went to the World Cup. When? Last World Cup? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Remember, remember Michael Oliver did semi-final. He did quarter-final. I think he did he did uh, the Argentina game or the Brazil game. Real good referee, man. Michael Oliver. Real good referee. He's a book referee, but he's good. Yeah, some referees are book referees. What mean by book? 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 Like yellow cap. What mean by book? No, book referees are like, 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 like to the book. So, for example, a player's on a yellow card, right? Mm. And 98 military game, and he score a goal, and he runs over the fence and take off in jersey and wave it in his stance. You know? He might go over there, boom, second yellow, red card. 
Cyril, I'll call him over, write down the goal when score, the time when score, and get on with the game. They can bend the law, but not broke it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So, so remember, you know. You see, in, a, in, a, in a referee, you can bend the law, but don't broke it. Yeah, man. A lot of times. When, when I did the game down at Anik Garden with Humble Lion and, and, and Anik Garden, I bend, I bend the law that night. Decided not to give them no card. Keep them on the field and continue the game. Mm. Me do game in a state of already where you would score. Final. Score. Almost win the game. Take off in jersey. Run going nice stand. Shake all the fence. And then come back on the field. Me don't give no second yellow card. Me go and let me not see and continue the game. That is bending the ladder. Football understanding. You get what I say? The moment. Huh? The moment him score. He, exactly. Yeah. Me don't give no yellow card. Me look past that. While some book referee. I'll give him the second yellow and run him off of the field. It's enjoyment. He man take off his clothes and yeah. Not wrong if you cash on him, you Te technically. Mm. But Tyrell now go do it. Me understand the game bigger than that. No, me think me thinking of that circumstance though. I think you should give the player. Like what you say. Especially if it's an important game. You don't mess up the game by giving the man another second yellow. That is a book referee. Technically, you know, you should, you know. But as we say, you can bend the law, but no broke it. Bending the law as bridging, you know, they're going already, you know. Now do that again. And you continue the game, that's bending it. Mm. Broken it now is you take out the yellow card, figure it, and no bother give it. You mm. don't mess up already. Once you pull it, you have to give it. So me bend the law that night. Okay, okay, okay. Fair yes. enough, fair enough, fair enough. Anyway, people, um, Ref Corner, the link, the link in the comment section, people. I we'll just pin it in the comment section. So this is the link, yeah, people. Man, you can go over there and check Kana. it out. R-E-F-K-O-R-N-A. Yeah, if you put in Ref Corner, I see it. Come Danny Jed. Yeah, Rock Sport. All of the man, them people. The link, Ref Corner. You can go over there and check it out. Click on it and subscribe to Ref Corner. Rock Ford. Yeah, yeah gun. Danny Jed. All of the Man United fans. Them. Chavis Peso. Chavis Peso. Hit everything, the line. everything referee related. Referee interviews. Yeah, but more, it, it needs to be more consistent. You know? Yeah, man. That's the work, Ryan. Man. That's the same. We have two young youth. The work. Everything. It, 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 you do it every day. You know? I, I, I'm not easy work. I hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dedication. Yeah, I try. Me a try, brother. Me a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Me, me get up every morning four o'clock, Ryan. Get them ready. Drop on my grandmother. Drop on a school. Me go teach my thing. If you pick up one two thirty, go back at school. Pick up the next one five o'clock. Come home every day. That Saturday morning, we wake up five o'clock. Cast off a training. I'm gonna come back home till night every Saturday eight nine o'clock. Sunday mm -hmm. alone, never little time for ref match. Come back five o'clock, and that's it every day for the week. <laughs> mm. You get me? Mm. So, are you the one to become a referee right now? Watching this show, you're inspired. Yeah, what so, advice would you give him? So, first of all, the, the, the opportunities are endless. Whichever parish you are a part of, you can join that association. So, if you are from St. Anne, just find where the St. Anne referee is trained. Kasafa, we train at JDF. JDF every Saturday morning at 7 o'clock. JDF? All right. JDF, Jamaica Defense Force. Yeah. yeah in our park. Yeah. On their campus. Yeah, man. Oh. We train on their campus. We have a field for ourselves. And for the past five, six years, that's where we have been training. Sometimes we move into different communities and so forth. Depends on what we have to do. But you can find whichever. Um, Parish you're a part of and join that association. The opportunities are endless. If you are anywhere between 16 to 21, 22, sky's the limit, brother. A FIFA referee right now is earning more than a master's degree. I'm going to put it past bachelor, a master's degree. All right, per month. One Champions League game, the fly out and come back. Is about $800, $900. Everything taken care of. When you do a World Cup qualifier game, it's anywhere between three, five, dollars and $4,000. One game. 
So you fly out Monday, you do the game Wednesday, you come back home Thursday. So the sky is the limit. You get to travel the world. You know, hotel is free. Play and fear is free. You get paid in US dollars. You get to know a lot of different countries, culture, food, people. You get easy visa. Easy visa. You understand? So the, the sky is the limit. Just be a part of, of, of this thing. And trust me, just look at look at look at um Oshia Nation, look at Daniel Pastor, look at Stefan Duart, look at Odette Hamilton, look at Stephanie Dale Easing. She has been to five World Cups. Stephanie Dale Easing. Jamaica, yeah, man, she's she's on my channel. Stephanie Dale Easing. Yo, you have got to send me them video there. No one listen to them. Yeah, man. Yeah. Trust me, she has been to five World Cups and she's going to the next one. When she tell me the things that she endures to go through, brother, trust me. And where she coming from. Yeah, man. So the, the sky is the limit. Anybody who wants to become a referee, the sky is the limit. Just go out there and enjoy. Trust me. And it's it's it, it's healthy lifestyle, you know? Because it, it helps to keep you fit and it helps to keep you going. I am still a referee. I've been a referee 22 years now. As I said, I'm 42 years old. I started early. I started when I was in college. And I I I, I get everything through football. I got an education through football. I know all the parishes through football, whether playing or refereeing. I know close to 30 countries, traveling, symposium, officiating, seminars, you name it. I may not been to a World Cup, but I still accomplish a lot. A lot out of football. Mm. So, at what age a youth can become a referee? I would say in Jamaica, anywhere from 15 years old upwards. Mm. Yeah, because 15 years old, we can use you in prep school, in pools, in Pepsi. But in, in, in the US, they start from as early as 9, 10. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So, tell me something. So, uh, what, what if a youth about 17? And he's very good, he's fit, he's doing so excellent at theme level. Would they give him that opportunity to ref? Yeah, man, yeah, man. So so what happened? When when he comes in at 17 and he's very fit and stuff, you would start him out, you know, start him out on the line. Suppose he's one of them who is a is a quick learner and, and learns the, the art very fast. Then we 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 um elevate him. So he may start at 17. And then he gets some nice schoolboy games. He gets some major league, some super league. And then by 18, he's on the Premier League panel. By 19, he's going overseas to do some CFU games. By 20, he becomes a FIFA. So mm -hmm. he had three, four years under his belt. So when you're a FIFA at 20 years old, you know how many years of earning you have? You can mm -hmm. refer until you're 45, 46. Mm -hmm. So you encourage them to start up early. Early, Just very, very early. Yeah. Very, very early. I started out early. And I told I, I tell people that I'm still referee, they can't believe because they haven't seen me for, for more than two decades. But I started out early. <laughs> I started yeah. out very, very early. 2021. And as a FIFA referee, you have to understand the law and the, 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 the thing. You have to know the law inside out. You see your cell phone? Everybody should have a smartphone, I think, right now. Unless you're a chopper, you have a balance. Everybody have a smartphone. But the IFAB app, you can download it. IFAB. Once you download it, you can pull it up. You can go in the laws of the game. So you if know, you ask me something, I can do it right out of my head. But what I normally do, after I consign everything out of my head, I screenshot from the IFAB the part of the law I'm referring to. But anybody can ask me a, a question right now on referring, I can answer it without going to the law book. But I just go to the lab of the screenshot the part that I gave you my answer and send it as reference. Mm -hmm. Because you know, so should I take the advice? So I look up pick up game. Um, mm -hmm. I no look pick up. Um, Carl Brown was the coach of Cayman at the time, mm -hmm. and Cayman and Boy Stone is playing, and they didn't have somebody to ref the game. And them time, them I was 17. And them give me the whistle. And me I tell you, say, them say, just go out there and riff it. Yeah. As you, Jal, me young, brother, everywhere they go, me I go. Yeah. The ball. 
And after the game, a big man come up to me and say, are you an official FIFA referee? And I say, no. And I say, trust me. You have everything in the locker. Go for it. I mean, never take it off. Me never take up the never opportunity. Take advice. No. Imagine if me start out that young. You understand? Yeah. You start out yeah. 17 yeah. when the person see the potential. Cause probably somebody see the potential where you wanna see. I mean, I said, no, nah, no, nah, football more. I'm playing. Yeah. You understand? But it's one of them things they still, you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of persons start out by playing, you know. And after their, you know, well, we can't bother with this no more. Straight into referee. Mm. Nation, nation played man in cup. Nation, Australian nation played man in cup. Mm. Uh, past men um, played cricket. He played cricket for his high school and for GC. Yeah. Hey, so we can pick up the whistle, it's never too late. Yeah, old boy, yeah, I know. 30, uh, man. You yeah, are 30. Men are yeah, good now. fitness. Me, me up the butt. I don't know. I have too much things for my plate now. Oh, see, have, see. I have this one more and take to the next level. You get yeah. the value, so... You can be a regional referee, just to see. Yeah. Regional Ref referee. Yeah, the ref, I look at game. I look at 16-year-old game. Yeah. Apart, down from me. They ask me to stand up in there. And knowing me, yeah. I love to run. That is my thing. I love to run. I now go stand up in there. One place. Yeah. I just kick off my slippers and dip on the grass. You know, nice grass, not like Jamaica where you worry about something I pick up in your foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to just riff it. You see me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. And it's not so hard for riff game up here. I'm going to see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Different style up there, everything. It, 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 way easier. I ain't going to get no whole heap of people who are fighting and all of them oh, stuff. Pussy, I tell you about your mother and something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to riff it, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 yo. So, how oh, you take on that? You know, take it personal when people are saying, yeah, uh, No, you know, back, back when I just started, um, it used to become a bad thing a little bit. But, me, me, me grew up here, ignore certain things, I'm a ref with earplugs. I say, referees, and they say, What you mean? They say, Yeah, I ref with earplugs. I ref with some imaginary earplugs. So, you have to filter what you hear, what you don't hear. Lots of times, I ref much, and people help me. Help me. Like referee just got three times before the man. Oh, for real. Persistent infringement. So you have blew the game, I blew the game, but you're not taking into account how much time this number five fall the number 12. And the coach say, referee, I five times now we fall the one, man. So you know in your subconscious, oh, for real. All right, the next one, boom, yellow fiat. Mm, look referee, for me. You hand the man, hand the back. Yeah. Huh? Like a man, I say, look for me. If you give the man the yellow card, about three. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So a lot of time they help you. And then we tell them so cloud, we tell them some things fabric and some Pablo's more wild, but mm. as we say, you have to know when to filter it. You know? Mm. If so if I get to you, you can eject yeah. somebody. Yeah, somebody the, the, the opponent ever cuss you yeah. say, you know, so I'm gonna make them boy a pay fee tonight. <laughs> yeah, man, all the time. All the time. You sure? You sure? All the time. Well, uh, you yeah, understand the as question. The, as the PH, as, as you make you the PH me, that you mean? I'm going to make sure, you know, because I don't want to get in a tub, you know. No, I mean, as, as, the, as the, the PH me, that you mean? Well, I'm going to ask you the question again. I don't know why you get this in a tub. No, man, you can't talk. I'm going to have to call you. Okay. I said, so, no. no. you ever an opponent fans, like a fans support on it, and the fans say, hey, referee boy, I did that. Wait, wait, wait. And you ref against them team where you say, yo, look at me already. Go and chat in at the stadium. You ever get to that moment? <laughs> oh, you mean the referee like like a retro, like, like, like yeah. a revenge kind of thing? Like yeah. against them team? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I don't ref like that. You have some referee ref like that. I don't ref like that. I mean mm. the ball and the field. You have yeah. some players, you know. You have some players who them at it, at it, at it. And, and you say, all right, watch me, I know. The next one you make, you look at the moment. So you don't already make up your mind already? Yeah, because you've gone three, four, five before you talk to him. Yeah. And the next one, you might go. And you say, make him here. You see me, I say, say, if you do it, if I write in your book. So you talk a lot. I've never, yeah. never revenge at you for a player. No. Mm. I'm not my kind of referee. So you ever, you ever, you talk to them, Lord? 
Yeah, man. All the time, man. All Come the time. In. Yeah. All the time. Hey, no bother with it, you know. Hey, you see, tonight, one referee out here. Yeah, yeah, man. All the time. Hey, no more. You got three, four already. One, this, one, this, one. No more. And you met them here. Yeah. You understand? So when you see the yellow car, the crowd knows say you talk to him already. I say, see the three places that we afford him, man. I'm fascinated. Yeah, I would love to hear some more what the referee is saying on the, on the pitch to the players. Yeah. Especially. Like, bad with that like, like, bad with like nah. Odette, I would love to hear what Odet said to these big man where she are dealing. Because yeah. <laughs> it must be, must be Tim and other female in that mega. Well, you used to not anymore. Trust me. Mm. Not anymore. Mm. Maybe four years ago, but not anymore. She's big in this thing, man. She gets a lot of respect now. Yeah. Somebody, Man City. Boy, I don't know, you know, I don't know what kind of city this is still in the brother, but he marks if you ever use curse word to the players. Player, player, curse, don't be cursed, then, man. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, man. Only for the team. Eh? Oh, yeah, this, that, that. that. Refer- I mean, yeah, so, yeah. Because, because the referee have to be smart. Mics are all the way around the field. So, you say if a one-on-one between you and him, fine. No done with it. But if a, ref- if a player got to tell you about it, with everybody here, that's a red card. Mm. Yeah, tell me, Chris, with everything, I'm telling him, write this, right? And they don't write this. Mm. Premier League, Monday night. Yeah, because sometimes, as we said before, you have to make the player them win sometimes. Mm. So picture this a big game down on it, on it versus Tibal. Player go on, whatever, whatever. And the player will be saying, say, referee, what the F you just do? You understand? We are going to rent yard him. I just, I just write, I just between you and him. We are going to rent yard the person. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, some referee are saying yeah, if you know, it disrespect. No, some say sometimes to make them win because hmm. it's that a lot of person been to the to the heights that I have been to. So sometimes you have to make them win. No, you go run after player that right there. So you're right, you know, technically you're right, but who heard you? Who heard him? What's between the two of you? So sometimes you have to make them win to make the game win. You forget what I'm saying. I, I understand that, but some so psycho so you do look on do it like that. Yeah, some referee said that oh, boy I disrespect me in him, right? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we as I mean. If the same player then who just this me now, three minutes down the line, commit a red card offense. You know how sweet that is? <laughs> you play right in your hand. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So you have to make them win sometimes. Before you go, me I share that joke here. So I was a captain of the Excelsior and Manning Cup team 2013. Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm always special the referee. Yeah. Me, me, yeah, I am that type of player. I will come out of the goal and go up in the referee face and all of them things there. I remember one instant I tried to do a referee over Manly. Mm-hmm. And I was giving it to him, man. Is that the referee decides him not to have it? But him know Coach Liebert Alleman is a discipline coach. Yeah. And me I tell you, say, the man go, and him wait to Alleman to tell him, say, to talk to me. That's the last yeah. thing me want my manager, Alleman, to come discipline me. So me I say, referee, oh, do me a beg you. Please. I could have get a red card right there, so. Yeah. So, so, him say, yo, him say, no, you've been doing it, and me I tell you, say, to stop, because me I shout out five and all of them stuff there. You know what I mean? When he makes some call, I mean, I said, that's not fault. I mean, I tell you, say, yo, half of the pitch me coming up. Yeah. Referee said, I talk to him, three, four, five. The next time we go out, the second half, I straight read me again. Yeah. The coach end up, take me off. At half time. Okay, red cat, Ali, man, take you off. He take me off because the referee said, I talk to him first, second, third. The next time, second half, half. Oh. And knowing my mouth, mm. trust me. Me nah, go him now nah, trust me for go up there again. You understand? Yeah. So him take me out. Yeah. yeah. End up lose that play and things. So yeah. So you don't know, remember who the referee was? No, I mean, I think him him kind of black and stout. Yeah, him 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 black and stout. Twenty thirteen over now, man, man. Mm. I remember. But I can't remember the referee name. But if I see him, a picture of him, I can't remember. It. Yeah, but a lot trust. of them come and go through Kasafa still. Trust me. Yeah, I've been there since two thousand and two. A lot of them go and go. A lot more mm. than a hundred. 
Wow. When you're in bridging, you know you're a busy man with your family. Now nah, go take up no more your time. Two hour and yeah, man, 25 minutes. Man. That is good, bridging. Appreciate you come and share your story to us. Yeah, man. I really do appreciate it, my bridging, man. But what you final say you have to say to the people? Eh? Yeah, I want to say it was it was great to be on your show, Ryan. All the persons who are, are listening, all the person who listened, for the person who left, you know. It was it was it was great to to share my story and to have a, a different insight and referee lifestyle or referees about or how referees have contributed to the game of football. So when you see referees, just just bear this in mind: we are humans as well, and especially in Jamaica, referees are being overworked at the highest level. Just take it from me: they are being overworked. There are fourteen teams. If you multiply four by 14, you'll get the number. We don't have that amount of referees in the panel. All right? We have about 20 odd referees in the panel. Mm. We're at that level. Yeah, at, the, at that level. In Premier League? I remember every week. Yeah, man, every week referees go out, you know, they go out. I'm, I'm talking referees who can service the league, you know. Mm -hmm. We may have 30 odd or close to 40, but we don't have the quality of referee to service the Premier League. Mm. So if you multiply that 14 by 4, because each game is 4, we don't have the amount of referees. So you may have a referee doing Monday night, into Sunday, into Monday night, into Tuesday, into Wednesday, into Thursday. Referees need break. They have lives. They have their work. No excuse for them, but it's just the reality of the system. We need more referees to join the system so we can produce more quality referees. All right? And remember to... Check out my channel, Ref Corner, R-E-F-K-O-R-N-A. So tell me something, what, what's, the, what's the salary a referee get for ref a Premier League game? Presently, I think it's $7,000. Presently, $7,000 oh. American dollars. That's, that's a little bit, though. That's a, that's, Regin, I got to Trinidad some years ago, 2016, and they were getting 110 US dollars for one year. Oh, so them country they get US? Yeah, man. Trinidad's oil, you know. Trinidad's oil. Wow. Yeah. I think they I need... I think it's 7,000 Jamaican dollars. They need to step up that, man. We are, we are, we are up there. Yeah, at least... But they do get traveling. So I refer we leave in West Berlin and come up here got traveling. But the, the base fee, the match fee, I think is 7,000 dollars. So many. Mm -hmm. But that's a little bit of money, though. Little yeah, bit of money. That, that's why so many referees yeah. have... So, I, what, what do you think of, is other referee in the world do a different job than referee? All right, the, the top referees in the world, they do referee alone. So, the top people referee, they do referee alone. So, mm. they, their association maybe pay them, like a monthly stipend. They ref, they train, they do tournaments. Your referees were dentists, you know? your referees were doctors. You know? mm. Keep up their profession until they're finished with referee. You understand? Mm -hmm. When Mike Geiger was a uh, FIFA referee for US, he was um headmaster at his school and he stopped his his edu, 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 uh, education. I mean, stopped being an educator until he retired from FIFA. But here in Jamaica, you have a nation in, in go to school, go teacher into it. Mafi left, Mafi got on it, go ref, Mafi go back home in the night, put in daughter to sleep, get up tomorrow morning, go to school again. And he does that every day of the week. Three, four, five matches. Mm. Yeah. And the must be yeah. three as well. Mm. Yeah, the referee thing needs to step up a yard, man. It needs to give the money at least a hundred and fifty dollar US. Big, Great. big, big time, brother. Big, big time. Man. This is that it, that that to that help, a hundred and fifty US. That we chicken feed that man. Seven thousand dollars per match, a chicken feed, right? So when last them get a if they, they, they don't get a race? I think I think they got a race this year. Before that, I think it was at a four five or five five. Yeah, before that. So we are. But, but I can tell you no. They do not. We are a lot better in terms of helping the referees. <laughs> oh, that no. Oh, seven grand. That was back in the day. Seven grand is no. Seven no. Grand, when oh. I was refing twenty nineteen, yeah. it was four five and five five. Seven yeah. grand is no because I did some photo fish and I started the season. Mm. So seven or eight grand is no. In our I did no four photo fish this season. 
In our Premier League? Yeah, man, because they were short and referred to the actor to be fourth official. Oh. Yeah. So oh. I just for help out. Okay, 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 yeah. okay. So it's different from part that right? them give different from part that them give them a little bit of finance. To no, they, they, no finance at all. Them no, help no. more to different things? No, that's all. It's just your match fee and traveling, that's it. <laughs> Nothing. So that's why most of the referee them have different them have got teacher, them have got do something else. Okay. Yes. See. So it's like I a would part ninety nine percent of the referees have a nine to five. So it's I like a part time so. job. It's a part time job, yeah. them are the referee. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, and you see, I will give the man them so much a hard time. Exactly. Chavis yeah. separate and apart from the white badge, it's just a stipend you get. When you mm. have a white badge, you get money overseas. But while mm. you're in Jamaica, it's just a stipend. Chavis, are you that? So, no, but of course, you them, Chavis. And players out here get 80 grand, 90 grand, 110,000 dollars a month. 150. So, still, I get even more than referee for the month. Jesus Christ. It's a lot of cussing, bro. Holy, but yeah, man, it was great being on the show, man. Great being on the show. Yeah, Anytime you have numbers, you can lift me up. Anytime. Yeah, man. Definitely, my virgin man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, Chavis, Chavis, stop pressure the referee, them brother. <laughs> Big up yourself and speed. You need to stop pressure the referee, them in the interview, brother. That man tell you. <laughs> yeah, the money, man, get you them. You get good color, you get bad color. Let's say go. Yeah, speed ever complain, virgin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, virgin, appreciate yeah, forwarding, virgin. No respect, yeah, virgin. No and think. Yeah, man. Bless you. Yeah, man. Bless you. People, big up on yourself, people down in the comment section. Chavis, bless you. Big up yourself. Pagan, big up yourself. Really do appreciate all of you guys. Russell, big up yourself. People, Ref Corner, make sure you check him out. Man from St. Anne, big up yourself. Let me tell you this, people. Me like learning, man. And a lot of people don't know many things I know in Jamaican football. Wally thing I know in Jamaican football is through interview. Me know the past and all of them stuff. There. Sometimes I remember some of them stuff there. Really and truly, I interview, interview me, interview people and get the knowledge and know enough of them stuff here. So I appreciate all of you guys down in the comment section. Nothing about love and respect. Seven grand brother. So Danny Jed, when you get a bad decision. Just bunk up the man name thing, Bridget. You see me, I say? Yeah. People, hit the like button and then we out, people. Danny Jed, stop pressure the referee when you got a match on Sunday, brother. Danny Jed, when you go down a center and they load the referee alone, brother. That me I tell you, brother. Sometimes I have to know all them things, Bridget. You know the man say, Danny Jed? <laughs> the reason why the man gets stripped in FIFA ban because the man talk up the man them they get paid for eight months I go to a year and a man scream shot the thing brother out of the referee group bro like Jesus Christ bro you yeah, hear yeah, that Chavis the man the man talk up and the man them strip him him, him ban <laughs> and him take him FIFA badge you see me I say? Yeah. Yeah, punish big man. Deal with big man. Joke thing, man. Joke thing, that. But anyway, viewers and subscribers, big up yourself. Chavis, same no. Anyway, people, big up on yourself. On the sleep good. I hope all of you guys enjoy the weekend. Long weekend for a lot of you guys. Holiday. So big up on yourself. Danny Jed, big up yourself. Yes, people, the studio, comfortable, man, I like people. Yeah, man, the studio. Danny Jed, the studio is shot right now. You understand? Studio shot right now. Mm. Well, comfortable upon the deck, say, you see me? I like you tell Lakers lose. I don't believe you, brother. Channel Star Lakers.
Como dia que você luz? LeBron James no play. Can't believe Lakers. Big up to all of the truck driver, the minute, brother. Big up yourself. Yeah. Big up yourself, brother. No flow and respect. Feel like we do another show in the people, but I leave it alone, people. Yeah, people. Feel like we do another show tonight, but. I don't know, but tomorrow night I come back here, man. Yeah, because I'm going to feel like I'm going to sleep right now. I feel like we do another show still, but let's see. Anyway, big up on the cell, people. No flow and respect. Appreciate all of you guys doing that in the comment section. Until next time, for my boy Ryan LFC, we like to say peace out. Thanks for watching. My name is Errol Stevens, former international player and reggae boy, and you're watching Elite Sports TV, Ryan, LFC. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date to get the latest content on the reggae boys football.